That ring is there, I believe that's our ring. I know this law, I believe you're right. Now, see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. <laughs> Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, now that Lum has finally gotten the wit of Jessup and her family out of his house and moved back in himself, he's able to turn his attention to the new business venture he has proposed for himself and his partner, the opening up of a moving picture theater. As you look in the little community today, we find Lum and Abner in their Jotham Down store and library holding a business meeting. Well, now, first I want to know, Lump, whereabouts do we build this theater at, and whereabouts are we going to get the money to do it? Well, there are a couple of things we got to figure out yet. Huh? That's why I called this business meeting with me and you. Well, I thought you said you had everything all figured out, though. <laughs> well, not everything. Not all them little bitty details. Them little ones, huh? All I got so far is the main idea. Oh. Uh. But that's the most important thing. You can't start nothing unless you have a main idea to start it out on, of course. Ah. Uh-huh. You can always figure out the details later. And that's what we're going to do right now. So that's the reason I had the meeting calls. Call the meeting right to order right now. Well, Lom, um, I can tell you this. I don't know where to get the money for this picture show. There ain't no use for me to have a meeting to find that out. I ain't got no money to put in. Or at least what it's not hardly none. You sure are. Well, I'm awful sure I know what I got. Well, money. we'll come to that later, then. You mean we'll come to my money later? No, I mean we'll come to that subject, I mean. Subject of money. Oh, uh, my money? No, just money in general, sort of. Oh. Uh, we call that subject B. B, huh? Yeah, first we'll take up subject A. Yeah. Well, I ain't been able to save much of that subject B lately, Long. Had to give Elizabeth a little subject B the other day to buy a new axe handle with. Ordin' a letter have it, neither. He could have taken a hickory limb over there and made one just as easy. But you know women folks, how they like to free their way money on them fancy feminine things that way. Yeah, it does them good once in a while, though. I've got to have a smooth handle. Oh, yeah. Nothing else will do. Well, some women like free too. It's yeah. all the things. Well, giving her that, well, that cut down that subject B of mine down to about $40, I think. $40, huh? Yeah, well, facts is that's exactly what it is, $40. But you've got that much, huh? Huh? Yeah, I've got that. I've good. That forty dollars I mean, got that good. Well, we get back to subject A now. Hey, huh? Yeah, that deals with finding a building to put the theater in. To put the theater in? Well, no, me, Mom, you'll never find no building big enough to put a whole moving picture theater into it. I mean, find a building we can buy or rent and remodel it over to where it'll be a theater. Oh, well, I was going to say, huh? didn't see much sense in building a theater building and then shoving it inside of some other old building. What was you aiming on doing? Hiding it? Of course not. What did you want to hide it for long? Never wanted to hide it. I just meant that we'd have to fix up some old building because we can't build a new one right now. Well, why can't we? Because they got priorities on everything. Building materials is scarce and all that. Oh. Uh, We're going to have a hard time to just get enough stuff to remodel someplace. Yeah, well, why don't we just give up the idea right now, Lom, and then I can save my $40, or I mean my subject, be I can keep that. No, no, we don't want to do that. We don't, huh? No, the picture show business is awful good right now, and so we ought to take advantage of that. Oh. That means we're liable to make ourselves a fortune out of this. Well, good for us. That's why I want to get started right away and find a building to rent. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we're going to have a hard time finding one with a slanting floor. That's the only trouble. Well, it... Uh... Finding one with a what, Long? A slanting floor. You know, the floors in a picture show all sort of run downhill towards the front, sort of. Yeah, doggies, that's right. I never could see no use in it, but they're that way. Well, they've got to be that way. Them places is hard enough for a feller to find his way around in in the dark without having the floor so slanting. Doggies, you trot three or four rows past where he's aiming on setting down every time you go in one of them. Yeah, but you got to have that slanting floor so they can look over one another's head so they can see the moving picture. Oh, yeah, I reckon that does help that all right. And another thing, we got to have a high ceiling so the machine that shows the moving picture will be clean up over everybody's head. Huh? If you don't, every time somebody gets up to leave or somebody comes in, it'll 
show their shatter up there on the screen, and everybody will wonder where he come from all of a sudden. Huh? Well, like in there at the county seat. You saw them young'uns down there on the front seat making shatters on the screen? Yeah. All is holding their hands up and moving their fingers so the shatters will look like some kind of animal opening and closing his mouth. Yeah. Well, no, I can do that long. You just take your hand and hold it up twixt the lamp and the wall and work your fingers sort of like this is the way you see. Keep them two I fingers know, closed. I know how you do it. Oh. Well, see your, your thumb there, that makes the ear. Looks just like a dog sticks in the back. You look at here, see that? <laughs> well, that's, that's the way I make a horse, though. I oh. don't know how to make all them things. Yeah, dog is I used to could make a rabbit somewhere. Let's see now, how was I done that? You set one fist up on the other, and like this, sort of, I believe it was, and then you stuck your thumb up here for the Well, I, I don't care nothing Something about like how it. you make them shatters that look like animals. I just want Well, what'd you ask me for then? I never asked you. Uh-huh. I just said that the young'uns at the picture show in there at the county seat all the time. There ain't no use to get them young'uns to come all the way out here from the county seat, Lum, when I can make them sadder just as good as they can. Well, that's the whole thing. We don't want them to. Huh? Just it. That's the reason we'll have to have a high ceiling so that we can get the picture machine up high enough to keep them from it. Well, I'll keep them from it. I'll them, be right down there on the front row anyway. I'll well, make them, them sit down. children from the county seat ain't the only ones can do that. These children here in Pine Ridge can make animals. If yet, there's huh? any shatters going to be made, I'll do it myself. We don't need a bunch of young'uns around there hollering and disrupting everything. Besides, I'm going to make them sit down. I'll keep check on them. No, I'm going to have a special seat for me right there on the front row every night. Might get a rocking chair. I don't know. No, you've got to be back there in the back to take up the tickets. Now, Lom, I told you this morning, the only way I'll go into this with you is for me and Elizabeth and Mary to see the show free every night. Well, you can see the show. Just get you a chair and set it back there by the door. Way back by the door? Well, you can watch the picture from back there and take up ticket every time anybody goes by you, too. You, you mean you want me to, uh, them to give me a ticket every time they come by me, huh? Well, sure. That's what you'll be there for. Well, you have to make everybody buy two tickets, then. Buy two tickets? Why, well, sure. They'll have to give me one when they go in, one when they go out. That is, they hand me one every time they pass by me. Well, why in the world would you want to take up a ticket when they're going out for? To keep them from slipping out of there. Uh, all right, fine. One ticket will be enough, I reckon. Just make twice as much money by selling them two, though, if we get them to do it. Oh, yeah, but ain't nobody going to buy two tickets to see no show. No, maybe not. I wouldn't sell them two tickets if I could. Wouldn't sell them two? Oh, of course not. Well, what if some fella brings his wife down there? You gonna make her stand outside and wait till it's over? Of course not. Well, now, Lom, the men ain't gonna stand outside and wait. I'll tell you that right now. Well, nobody ain't gonna stand outside and wait. If a fella brings his wife down there, he'll buy two tickets. I, I thought you said you weren't gonna sell nobody two tickets. Well, what I meant is, you just leave the ticket selling up to me. All you gotta do is just take them up when they go in the door. Hmm. All right, I still don't see no... Come thing. on, now, let's get back to Subject A. Huh? Subject A is finding the building to rent. Hey, Ron, what if I do catch somebody trying to sneak in without no ticket? Just throw them out. Huh? Now, in regards to what Subject A... What if I a, catch myself sneaking in? Yourself? Yeah. If I'm going to be taking up tickets, well, I believe I could sneak in without getting caught. Well, I'm a little too fast for me, I believe. Well, what would you want to do a silly stunt like that for you get to see the picture free for nothing anyway. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wouldn't want to throw myself out if I catch me. That, that might hurt me. Yeah, that wouldn't be no fun. Believe I'll give up that idea right well, now. Well, that's fine. Just drop the idea right here now. It's no good anyway. Just forget well, it. Proud you come to that conclusion. Yeah. Now, maybe you'll pay attention to Subject A. The worst idea anybody ever studied. Now, like I said before, we've got to find a place where, uh, with a slanting floor and a high ceiling. Hey, doggies, wait a minute. How about that old palm row at Barn, Mom? Barn? Yeah, you know, the one they built over there next to the creek, and the flood might not washed it down into the creek here a few years back. That floor slants there awful good. Well, that's why you aren't too small. Uh, Besides, we don't want our picture show in no barn now. Well, why don't we just buy the floor then, long as it's already slanting and move it? No, we got to have more than just a floor. We've got to have a ceiling and walls. Well, call up the old PA. OPA. Yeah, Dick Hutterson said the other day OPA is putting ceilings on everything. Just call them. Well, I believe I'll call up Dick. No, it's the OPA you're supposed to call them. Dick Hutterson was just the one that was telling me that. I ain't talking about that, Abner. I just want to see if Dick knows of some building we can buy or rent. Uh, I'll bring him right now. Well, why don't you call Squire Skiff? He owns Mike and I ever vacant building in town long. No, I don't want to get him mixed up in it. Oh. Uh, 
Hello, Dick. Any kind of a building. Uh, this is Lum. Only they put a new ceiling. Oh, just only tolerably, Dick. How's yourself? Say, you know that picture show idea I was telling you about? Oh, well, you don't happen to know where about this uh, old building we might rent for it, do you? Huh? Oh, Granny, if I never thought about that. He might rent us that old cotton warehouse of his. Well, doggy, that'd be big enough, sure. Of course, we'd have to do quite a bit of remodeling, Dick. Yeah. Put in a slanting floor and all that. Won't have to buy a seat except right there on the bill of the top. You wouldn't, huh? I want to. Well, are you sure you ain't got no use for it? <laughs> well, that'd sure help us out. How much rent would you want for it? Oh, I don't know what to say, neither. I could. $2 for well, how about uh, three months for $40? $40? I grant you, it's a deal, Dick. <laughs> yeah, I think I know where I can get $40, and I'll bring you the money quick as I can. Yeah. All right, Dick. Much obliged. Goodbye. <laughs> well, Abner, old boy. Yeah. We're now going to take up subject B. Huh? <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I know it's Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the plans to put in a motion picture theater were forwarded yesterday when Lum made arrangements with Dick Huddleston to rent a building for their new enterprise. The building was formerly a cotton warehouse. As we look at the little community today, we find the old fellows in their jot them down store and library. Lum is talking on the telephone. This. Yeah, well, that'll be fine, Eugene. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's a deal. Deal, everything's a deal. Well, we'd like you for you to get started right uh, today if you can. <laughs> well, good. Or anybody. All right, fine, Eugene. Yeah. Goodbye. Hi, right, Granny Zabner, we're moving right along now. Uh, the wheels of progress is in motion. The wheels is motion. Yeah, yeah, they're moving. Eugene uh, Blevins said he'd get a couple of other carpenters and go right to work on the old cotton warehouse putting in the slanting floor. Yeah, now, Lom, there's just one thing I'd love for you to tell me. Whereabouts are we going to get the money to pay for all this carpenter work? Well, we got to get it different places. Different places? More than likely, we'll have to mortgage this store, I'm feared. Mortgage a store. Well, just temporary. Now, until listen, the money Mom, starts coming in from the picture show business. I was willing to put up my $40 to rent the warehouse, but I don't believe we ought to risk losing a store on this big picture show out of here. We got to do it, Abner. No, right? sir. No. Can't start a picture show for $40. I don't care. That's all I'm putting in. Well, yeah. uh, anytime you start up a big business, you got to put up a capital invest. <laughs> And that's about the only way I know of to get a capital invest to put up. No, no. no and don't forget this. We're going to clean up big money on this picture show. You just wait and see. Well, I still think, hold on, we ought to sort of talk this thing over some more now before we start in mortgaging the store and everything else that we got. No, now, Abner, we, we can pay the mortgage back. Granny, so all the money we'll make out of the picture show, we'll have that paid off in no time at all. No, don't want to do it. got to get this thing started quick as we can. No, 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 Margie. Don't, don't you worry. realize that we're losing money every day by not having the moving picture theater open? Losing money? Why, sure. Uh huh? If we do the kind of business we ought to, we're losing at least $25 a day till we get the thing opened up. For the land sakes. Are you sure about that, Long? Of course I am. I done figured it out. Well, we better hurry and get it opened up then. We'll have every cent of money we own lost before we ever get started. Well, that ain't the money we're losing. Though. That's the only money we got, Long. That money in the cash drawer and what little mean you got in that joint of bank account in there at the county seat. You done used up my $40 cash. So it'll just have to come out of the bank or the cash drawer one. Well, what I mean, Abner, is we're losing money every day, all right, but, well, we're losing it and we ain't losing it. 
Well, which? Well, we ain't losing none of the money that we've got there in the bank or in the cash drawer. That's all I've got. But it's costing us $25 a day till we get opened up. That's profits that we ain't making by not being open. It's still costing us that, though, huh? Yeah, that's it. That. Well, who are we going to pay that to? Pay what to? That $25 that is costing us. Well, nobody in particular. Squire Skimp? No. I'll bound you that Squire's mixed up in it somewhere. You said you wasn't going to deal with him, Lord. Squire ain't got a thing to do with it. We'll lose it, but we won't never have to pay it, of course. We won't? Of course not. <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> Lord, me, I don't care how much we lose, we don't have to pay it. Go ahead, lose 50 if you want to. 100, 200, no, I don't care. That's about right, $25. Lose all you want to. The thing to do is for us to get started quick as we can, though. We don't want to lose no more than we have to. Well, what difference does it make? As long as they ain't going to try to collect it. Doggy, that must be some new kind of figure, and I never heard of that before. Running up debts you don't have to pay. There ain't no debts we're running up. Well, whatever it is, sounds like a good idea, Long. Doggy, I just wish the government could figure out the taxes on that same basis. Well, they can't very well do that, so you might just as well get that idea out of your mind right here now. Nah, I wish they could. That'd save us folks a heap of money around here. Mm, good, all right. Oh, yeah, it's a good idea. Opening up this picture show will save the folks here in Pine Ridge a little money, too. It will. Well, sure. All as before, they had to drive clean to the county seat to see a show. But having one right here in town, we we save from driving that 22 miles. That'll save the price of admission on gasoline. Well, will they save that much, sure enough? Why, well, sure. Easy that much. Take more than a quarter's worth of gasoline for that trip. So as I bound you, old Ulysses S. Quincy will be proud to hear that. Well, he ain't got no car. I know he ain't, Mom, but he's got that gasoline engine over there that he saws wood with all the time. Well, he couldn't drive that thing to the county seat. <laughs> Why, of course not. <laughs> couldn't drive it no place. Couldn't even drive it around that unpainted barn of his. And, well, thanks, it ain't got no wheels on tall. Couldn't drive it no place. Just no, no driving. Well, no. how's he going to save anything on gasoline, then? Well, he has to buy gasoline for the engine all the time, don't he? Yeah, but the only way they can save anything is by driving into the county seat. Oh, oh, they, they got to drive clean into the county seat before they can save anything, huh? No, wait a minute now. No, that's right, yeah. Huh. It's the ones that don't drive in there that saves on gasoline. Oh, well, I'll just tell you, Lissy, that he can quit going in there then. Start trading over at Mount Ida. Well, it's as far over to Mount Ida as it is over to the county seat. Yeah, but does it work on Mount Ida, too? Well, sure, it works on any place. Now, when did they start that? They never started it. It's just something that's always went on. Oh, Doggy, that's cuter. I never heard of it before. Maybe they just started that around Pine Ridge here late, Lum. I never heard of no, it. No, it ain't nothing that you start or stop. Huh? All I mean is if the folks go to the show out here instead of going to the county seat, they'll save at least a quarter on the gasoline it would have taken them to drive in there. Well, if we just uh, charge a quarter and, and, and they save a quarter, well, then it ain't going to cost them nothing to go to the show, is it? That's just exactly what I've been trying to tell you. Thank goodness you finally got it through that thick skull of yours. Yeah, well, you're right about that, too, Lum. Um. You see, these things, they ain't so hard to understand once you catch on to them. But you sure you got it straight now? Am I sure I got it? Yeah. Well, wait a minute here. I'm the one that's explaining this to you. No, sir. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> Well, anyway, now that we both understand it, well, I can see it. we ought to do an awful big business here. Everybody in town will be going to the show if it don't cost them nothing. Well, of course they will. Oh, yeah, yeah, they'll fill that place every night. That'll be one of the big talking points in our advertising. Oh, sure. Or to the them show in. free for nothing. Why, sure, well, that'll get them in. Yes, sir, you don't have to worry about that. Of course, I don't see how we're going to make any money out of it, though. Letting them in free that way. Letting them in free? If it don't cost them nothing, that's free, ain't it? Well, yeah, but here's the idea. I mean, the only ones that'll save anything is the ones that aim to go into the county seat, but never. Yeah, but now how are we going to tell who aim to go in there and who never? Well, it ain't up to us. Uh, they don't know whether they aim to go to the county seat or not. Well, yeah, but they'll catch on to that long. They'll all be coming down there that picture show every night, claiming that they was aiming to go to the county seat. Just so as we'll let them in free. Let them in free. Why, sure, that's exactly what that grandpappy Spears will do. And I'll bound you old Charlie Redfield will try it. Might now every night he can get out of the house. You wait and see. Well, Abner, you don't understand how this yes, works. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. It's a bad thing to start, too, on. 
you let one or two fellas in free, you got to let everybody in free. You might just as well open up the doors of the picture show and just let them all in for nothing to start with. I'm sorry for you ever started that long. Well, now, don't start feeling sorrowful about that, because I ain't started it. Huh? There ain't going to be nobody getting that picture show free. I'll see to that myself. Oh, yes, he is, too. Oh, no, they yes, ain't. Now, is. that's one thing that we ain't going to start. All right, then. I just won't go in on it with you. Well, what's your idea of wanting to let folks in for nothing? We can't make no money. You said gonna... this morning that me and Elizabeth and Mary could get in for nothing every night. Now, I don't get it. Oh, for goodness sakes, Abner, you drive a body crazy. Get me some mixed up. I don't know where I'm at, even. You're sitting right here in the store. I know where I'm at. You never till I told you. You said so. Abner, if you don't hash up, I'm going to whop you on. I've just stood well, all Mom, I, I was only it. trying to tell you on this picture show, Idy, we can't let... Yeah, hey, uh, howdy, 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 Grandpad. What's all the pigeon toad fussing about? Come on in. Well, I'm proud you come in when you did, Grandpad. Abner was just about to drive me stark raving mad crazy. All I was trying to do was straighten him out, Grandpad. He's got some peculiar ideas to where everybody that don't go to either county seat or Mount I, they can get in our picture show for nothing. Oh, for that God. is, if they aim to go, but never, and then can prove it. And then that Lom turns around and says he ain't going to let nobody in for nothing when he told me this morning and that I, I could get in. Again, Abner, I don't believe I quite followed you. I'm here, Lom, to here to clean. Just hash up, Abner. Forget the whole thing. Act like I never said nothing at all. Well, to be honest, you never said nothing. These ways, nothing that made no sense. Especially at Idy, where it's costing us $25 a day now. We don't have to pay it to nobody. Well, Abner, I tried to explain to you how that works. But trying to get something through that thick head of yours. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's all right. you with a stump. I'll get it. I better start handling oh, things think how you two fellas carry on. Get some brains. Uh, John, I'm down store in library. Abner Peabody doing the talking. Oh, just tolerably, Eugene. Eugene, uh, maybe I better talk to him, Abner. How's that? $25 a day. Oh, no, you don't. That's too much money. Well, yes, sir. Bad, Abner, $25 a day. All right, just go to work for that other fella then. We ain't going to pay you no such amount as that. I can tell you that right Wait now. Minute, Abner, uh, them's the only carpenters in town. I wouldn't All right, that. go on. Don't make you mad, Abner. All right, goodbye. Don't go settle him right now. Now you've done it. Huh? Made the only carpenter's town mad at us, and now we won't have nobody to build a show for us. Well, Lon, we can't afford no $50 a day. Fifty dollars? Yes, sir. I thought he just told you twenty-five dollars a day. Well, twenty-five dollars for the carpenters, yeah, but then that uh, other twenty-five dollars. What other twenty-five dollars? The twenty-five dollars a day is costing us not to open up. I doggy, that's fifty dollars a day, and we just can't afford it. Granny's, Abner, I believe that's our ring. I dog his llama, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lama Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, work on remodeling the cotton warehouse into a moving picture theater was held up yesterday when Abner, through some mistaken notion of figuring costs, fired Eugene Blevins and the other carpenters. It took Lum the rest of the day to straighten things out and rehire them. As we look in on the little community today, we find Grandpappy Spears in the Jotham Down store and library discussing the new venture with Abner. Well, is there a heap of work we got to do yet, Grandpap? We got some carpenters over there remodeling the old cotton warehouse and got to get tickets printed up. I don't know what all. Lom's out right now trying to rent some folding chairs from Moe's Moose. From Moe's Moose? Yeah, down at the barbershop there. Well, he ain't got but two chairs down there in that barbershop of his. Huh? But they ain't folding chairs. Oh, uh, well, yeah, they do fold backwards when Moe's wants to shave you. But is them, is them the kind of chairs you're... Aiming to have in the picture show of yours? Well, I don't believe so. Lom was just aiming to get just ordinary folding chairs over at the lodge hall. See, Mose is one of the high officers there in the lodge now. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, I believe them barber chairs would be a sight more comfortable. Barber chairs? Yeah, I'd try to put in a batch of them, Abner. 
bad dog as them things would be good. Yeah, then they could run the picture up on the ceiling. Everybody could lay down, get a shave, and see the picture show at the same time. Yeah, of course, there's going to be a lot of women and children in there, Grandpa. Shave them, too. Just shave them all. Well, they hate to start shaving just to get to see a picture. Yeah, that's right. Would be nice, though, sort of lay back there and watch a picture. If you didn't like it, you'd just go to sleep or ask most to drop a towel around your face. Yeah. Of course, I still say you'd be getting a shave while you're looking at the moving picture. Don't get I'll talk to Lom about that when he comes in. I believe that might be a good idea, Grandpa. Of course, now, them things cost quite a bit of money, Abner. They do, huh? They run right into money. Oh. Yeah, I forget what Moe's told me they cost, but it, it weren't cheap, I can tell you that right now. Well, maybe we better give them up, then, because I'm just afraid this whole thing's going to cost us away yonder too much as it is, Grandpa. You know how extravagant Lom is. Never stops to think what anything costs. Oh, he's a spender. Oh, oh he's a yeah. spender. Spends money like he gets it out of a car. A spender. You yeah, have to watch him all the time. Well, that's why I sort of taken over a couple of things here myself. Or uh, leastways, I've studied up one idea that'll save us money. I know that. And that Lom will just be tickled to death when I tell him about it. <laughs> What did you do? I don't know why in the world we never thought of it before. Now, it'll cut out a lot of extra carpenter work over there. Carpenter work, huh? Yeah, on a remodeling that old cotton warehouse over there. Uh-huh. Yeah, I reckon that is going to be right smart of a job doing that. Well, not the way I got it figured out. See, all we got to do is build a little room upstairs in the back of it there for the magic lantern or picture show or machine or whatever they call it. Then just board up the window so the light can't get in. Yeah, it looked a little more like a opera house in. It sure don't look like one now. No, well, it will, though. And then my idea... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yonder comes along. You can listen while I tell him about it. Yeah. yeah tell it twice that way. No, sir, I just can't <laughs> hardly believe it. A picture show right here in pine. Uh -huh. It's too good to be true. <laughs> yeah, hi, Lom. Uh, come on in here and let me tell you what I've done, Lom. Oh, my goodness. Now, what have you did? Huh? Uh, hello, Grandpap. I did, Lum. Well, sir, I just saved us a hundred dollars is what I done. Saved us a hundred dollars? Yes, sir. Well, good for you. Give it here. A hundred dollars clear like, well, I ain't got the cash money, but I saved us that. Well. See, Eugene Blevin said it cost us a hundred and fifty dollars to put a new floor in that warehouse. Yeah, but we've got to have a new floor. Not the way I figured it out. That floor we got in there is just fine, just like it is. Well, it's all right. It's stout enough, but it ain't slanting. Huh. See, a uh, room picture show's got to have a slanting floor so those folks can see over one another's head. Well, this one will have a slanting floor when they get done doing what I told them to. See, instead of building a new floor alarm, I've got them over there raising up one end of the building. That's fine. Ra raising up one end of the building? Yeah, we're hiking up the front end of the building there to where it'll be about six foot higher in back than it is in front. And that'll make it slanting and we won't have to be on a new floor. For goodness sakes, Abner, that ain't going to work. What's the reason it ain't? Why, the building won't look right. Huh? The windows and doors will all be slanting, too. Yeah. How are folks going to get up there to the front door to get in? With it sticking about ten foot in the air that way. Oh, I hadn't much thought about that, I don't think. It's a trouble you don't think. Yeah, of course, we could build a ladder or some stairways up there. We could do that long. We could, but it'd look awful silly. Here's yeah, something I... else. That little room we was aiming on using for the box office, that'd be slanting, too. Yeah, everything would be slanting. It's going to be hard to make them barber chairs stick on a slanting floor, too, Abner. Barber chairs? What barber chair? Oh, nothing. I just forget about that. Wait a minute. You ain't went and bought up a batch of barber chairs while I was gone. No, you? sir, I ain't honest. Are uh, uh, you sure you ain't? Cross my heart. Me and Grandpap were just talking about it, but we give up the idea long. Well, thank goodness for that. Yeah, it wasn't good. I no. rented all the chairs we'll need from Moe's Moose just a little while ago. Well, good. And after this, Abner, you keep your ideas to yourself and don't meddle in something you don't know nothing about. Well, I was just trying to save us some Grandpap, will you do me a favor? I don't know. Depends on what it is. What is it, Lom? I wish you'd run over to the warehouse and tell Eugene, that's the carpenter over there, to hold off on that raising the building. Tell him to go ahead and put the floor in there like I told him to. Yeah, I'll tell him. Sure I will. Yeah, I sort of figured on zapping around there to watch him work anyways. I I'll see you fellas later. Yeah, so long, Grandpa. Yeah, so long. It's tipping a building up on one end. Well, Lom, I just... The front door would be mighty nice straight up in the air. Every uh, time it rained, uh, flood the whole building. Uh, and come through the windows like a hole in the roof. Well, I was just trying to save us some money is what I was trying to do. I know you was, Abner, but after this, just leave the money saving up to me. Costs us too much when you do it. Huh? I mean that... Well, just skip it. 
You ain't got no head for figures is the whole trouble, Abner. I ain't, huh? No. Now, well, let's see. Huh? What's the next thing we got to get for a theater? What? Did you save any money on renting them chairs from Moe's Mood? Well, no. The fact is, I had to give a little more for them than I wanted to, but I know we had to have them, so there weren't much I could do about it. Well, why couldn't we just put some benches in there, Long? Benches? Yeah, or set some candy buckets in there upside down, and then just lay some boards across them. Candy buckets with boards across them. Yeah, them make good benches. Just such small town ideas. It embarrasses me just to be partnerships with you. Well, what's wrong with that idea? Abner, we've got to fix the picture show up nice, make the folks feel comfort in there. We're going to have folding chairs or nothing. Mm-hmm. All right. I just hope we don't spend every cent we got before we get it started, though. Well, Abner, it's like I've always told you, you've got to spend money to make money. Spend money to now, make now, it? Now, don't ask me to explain that to you, because I've explained it a thousand or a hundred times already. I'll Besides, we got too many other things to worry about. Locating a moving picture machine, for incident. Huh? We got to get one of them machines to show the pictures with. Oh, one of them magic lantern things? Well, they don't call them magic lanterns, though. They don't, huh? And it's going to be a hard job finding whereabouts we can get one of them, too. I know that. Well, why don't we just write a letter out there to California and tell them to send us one? To California? Why, sure. That's where they got all that moving picture stuff. Out there in Hollywood. Well, they more than likely have, but that'd take way yonder too long. Besides, I, I wouldn't know who to write to. Well, just write to any of them, Mary Pickford, Charlie Chaplin, any of them fellas out there. Well, them actors don't have the moving picture machines themselves. Huh? I don't think. Oh. Besides, I, I don't know what zones they live in anyway. Zones? Well, don't they live in houses just like us folks? Well, of course they live in houses, but the post office has decided the cities and... and should have zones to make it easier for delivering the mail, so they divide them up. Oh, oh, zones, huh? And so when you send a letter to somebody, you're supposed to put that zone number on the letter, right along with the address. Dick Huddleston told me all that. Well, them folks in Hollywood would be in regular three-cent zones, I believe. Well, they ain't got nothing to do with the amount of stamps you put on there. I told you that they've divided all the big cities up and... Nobody's divided Pine Ridge up, or leastways they hadn't when I was making a deal ever this morning. Like. Well, Dick says Pine Ridge ain't big enough to need it. Ain't big enough? Well, you see, the post office taking these big cities and divide them into zones... Uh, how so do they, they can... divide them? Put up a big wall? No, of course not. Well, Lon, you can't take a city and just cut it into pieces like you do an apple pie. I know that. What they're more than likely doing is taking a map of the city and drawing lines on it, dividing it that way. Well, what do they want to divide it for? Don't the folks get along with one another? Of course they do. The idea is just supposed to help speed up the mail. Huh. For instance, if I was writing to a fella in Philadelphia, say... Philadelphia? Hey, can you get a moving picture machine there? Well, I don't know where I can or not. I'm just... Well, just don't waste either. time writing there, Lump. Write direct to that Hollywood. That's the thing to do. All right, then. Yeah. Say that I was writing a letter to Hollywood. Of course. Now, if you think there's a chance of getting one cheaper in Philadelphia, why, well, go right ahead and write. I'm for anything that'll save money. I Lump. never said I could get a cheaper one If there. there's one there and you like it and think you can make a good deal on it, you just go ahead and get it. But, Abner, I... Me and you are partnerships it. in this thing, and we ain't going to get no place fussing. So if that's what you want to do, I'm fine. But I don't want to. You don't have to to argue no more, Lon. You win me over. I know you got your heart set on that machine there in Philadelphia, and I doggy that's the one we're going to have. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Believe that's all right. I'll get it. Abner, I never said that I was... Hello, John, I'm down to the library. Abner, Peabody, don't have talking. It's like arguing with a stump on far. Yeah, this is us. Stubborn-headed as a blue-nosed mule. You did? Oh, well, that must have been Mr. Edwards you was talking to. Who is it, Abner? The fellow that runs the Lyric Theater in there at the county seat. Said you talked to him there a week or so ago. Oh, yeah, him. Uh, how's that? I never quite heard you. That's an old e uh, Shake up your phone there. I never quite heard you. I told him I was thinking about putting a picture show in there. Oh, well, that was awful thoughty of you, but uh, we done made arrangements for that already. Better let me talk to him, Abner. Well, I can't help it if it is a good price. You'll have to count us out. Abner, let me have the phone. Well, sure, go ahead. Sell it to that other fella, anybody, because we're getting one from Philadelphia. Oh, yeah, good one, too. Yeah, goodbye. Philadelphia, oh, my goodness. Was he trying to sell us a moving picture machine? Yeah, he had a old second hand in there. He's trying to sell cheap, he said. But, I uh, doggies, I wasn't going to let him spoil all your plans, Lom. My plans? Yes, sir, you can always depend on me never to let you down. Yes, sir, Lom, old boy, I'm your partner. You got your heart set on getting one from Philadelphia? All right, doggies, you go ahead. <laughs>
granny's in. I believe that's our ring. I don't get Lama. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lama Abner. <laughs> Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, yesterday, Abner nearly spoiled a chance to buy a second-hand projection machine from the theater at the county seat. However, Rum was able to patch things up and finally made a deal for the machine and left early this morning for the county seat to pick it up. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Downs store and library talking to Cedric. Uh, doggies, here he comes, Cedric. Mom? Uh, it's Lom, back from the county seat. Mm. Looks like he got the moving picture machine, too. See him out there? Oh, yes, Mom. Uh, you better run out there and help him, Cedric. That thing looks heavy. Hurry up now. Go on out and help him tote it in. Yes, Mom, I'll help him. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute. I'll hold the door open for you. Doggies, that thing's bigger than I figured it'd be. Can I help you, Mr. Long? Don't ask him. Go ahead and help him there. Cedric will help you, Long. Here, I'll take it, Mr. Long. Yeah, I wish you would, Cedric. Yeah, come on now, Cedric. Bring it right in here. And, uh, well, you can set it right over on the counter, I reckon. Yes, Mom. That's it. Right over there now. Take it easy. That's uh, our time. Right down there. Greenies, I never realized before how heavy one of them machines was. Oh, I uh, could tell that thing was heavy. You sit down here a minute and rest up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Sit down, Long. Make yourself comfortable <laughs> here. Look out. Watch out the cat there in the oh, chair, Long. Get out of there, Geraldine. Greenies, I'm more to a frazzle. Was a fresh of. Well. <laughs> I had to walk halfway around town before I could find a strong enough box to carry it. Yeah, careful there, Cedric. Now, don't go monkeying around that machine. You're liable to break something. Well, right? I just want to open up the box and look what's inside. Well, just leave it alone now. Well, let him go ahead and look at it, Emery. It can't hurt nothing. Huh? Maybe he can figure out how to run it. Oh. Uh. We're going to have to have somebody to operate that machine, you know. Yeah, doggies, that's right. I never thought about that. <laughs> Couldn't hardly run itself, I don't reckon. <laughs> Tell you what, Cedric, why don't you tote the whole thing out to the feed room and study it on it a while and see if you can catch on to how it works. Yes, Mom, I'd love to do that. <laughs> Boy. Yeah, be careful with it, old Cedric. Yes, Mom, I'll be careful, honest to will. And, and if you catch on to it good, why, well, we might give you a steady job in the picture show over there. Would, would I get in free every night to see the picture show then? Why, of course you would. Free for nothing? Yes, sir. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> you better get on back there now and start trying to work it out now. Yes, Mom, I sure will. Uh, I, I can't stand here and hold this thing and talk to you much longer, no way. Well, go on then, Cedric. Get back to the feed room. That's where you're supposed to take Get it. in free for nothing every night. Wonderful world. <laughs> oh, Lord, Cedric, just take a hint of yeah, that. Yeah, well, I figured he would be. You reckon he can catch on to running a complicated machine like that, though, huh? Yeah, I think maybe he can. He's sort of slow at most things, but when it comes to figuring out machines, that boy's got a head on his shoulder. Well, I, uh, uh, always has, huh? Why, sure. He can take that car he has apart and put it back together again and blindfold it, I believe. Yeah, he can do that. He's uncommonly good at that. Of course, that's not what we want him to do right now. No, he don't need to run no car to pitch you, so that won't help nothing. No. That machine's what he's got to figure out. Yeah, I don't know why he even said that. Yeah, don't tell him that. He'll bring that old car his and up there and try to I start ain't going to say him. nothing to him about it. Yeah, just be quiet. You know, that boy you might have just a natural-born mechanical's mind. What he might have. Yeah, he might. He's got any mind at all. Yeah, I know he's smarter at such as that than, than I am. I know that. But well, to be right honest, I, I believe he's got it all over me, too. He has, huh? Yeah. I reckon we ought to get the machine out to the warehouse pretty soon so Eugene can start building a table for it to set on. A table? Yeah, you see, the machine will be upstairs in that little room there that we're fixing clean at the back end of the building. At the back end? Yeah. Uh, Doggy's old Eugene sure mixed up on that then, Long. Mixed up? Yeah, he's building that room up in the front. In the front? Yes, oh, sir. Oh, for goodness sakes, I might have known things would go wrong if I left town. Well, he sure done it. I never knowed no better. I'd have stopped him, but I dropped in there this morning whilst I was making the delivers and sat around there and washed them for a while. You done what? Stood around there and washed them carpenter for a while. He's building that, that room there right up over the box office. That's where he's putting it. Oh, well, that's all right. Uh, that's the back of the house. The back. Yeah, you see, when you get inside of a picture show that way, you go in the front, but when you get in, you're in the back of the house. Well, I... Uh, when you get inside of a show that way, the front starts being the back, and the back starts being the front. Uh, 
Uh, Rack came up and shoot again, Lom. I don't believe I can't quite catch you there. Well, you see, when you walk inside the front door, it's the front of the house. But yeah. when you're sitting on the back seat, they call that sitting in the back of the house. You mean that you're going to turn the building around every time somebody goes inside of it? No, no, no. That's going to be awful expensive, Lom. Getting wheels strong enough to hold up a whole big building. Like well, we that. ain't going to put no wheels under it. Well, how are you going to turn it around then? I know I can't share that thing around. We ain't going to turn it around. Things just sort of change. Dog, I never had noticed that. You see, when you come in the front door of a picture show and sit down, quick as you get inside, you always say you're sitting on the back seat. If you sit down quick as you get inside, you ain't going to sit on no seat. Well, right? I mean, if you sit on the first seat you come to. Oh. But you you just come in the front, of course. Now, if you want to sit down in front, you've got to go clean to the back. Well, I do know. I mean, you're getting me mixed up. <laughs> well, I must have been turned around them things and never noticed. I always sit on the front row if I can... Find a seat that ain't took, or find some young and let me hold him in his lap. All the time I've been sitting on the back and unbeknownst to myself. Yeah, I, well, no, you wasn't. You you sitting in front. Well, now, how was I in front, Lum? Well, he just now said I was sitting on the back. Who was it you was holding in your lap? Well, a different ones. I felt different. You know, Cedric, it's a little bit of a machine out of the box, but I don't know what to do from there on. Oh, well, good for you, Cedric. Well, just start right out rubbing it then. Well, I don't know how to do that, though, I don't think. Oh, well, dog, is I don't know what to tell just you. Just follow the instructions, Cedric. There's some instructions printed on something there. They'll tell you what to do, I think. Yeah, that's the thing to do, Cedric. Follow the instructions. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll try that. Follow the instructions. Yeah. I hope he can figure that thing out. Oh, he's bound to. Mechanical's mind like he's gotten on. He, he'll figure it out all right. Yeah, let's see, where was we at now? Oh, yeah, I was sitting in the front row. Only I was actually in the back row and never noticed. That's a good one on me. <laughs> Just don't study on that no more, Abner. You're getting yourself mixed up, and me too. Well, I must be long. Eugene's building the room at the right end of the building, and that's all that matters. Yeah, I hope so. Just hope I don't lose my directions in there and get lost. That's all I hope. I believe what I'd better do is just sort of take a pocket full of breadcrumbs in there with me every time I go in that picture show. Breadcrumbs? Yeah, and then sprinkle them along the floor so as I can find my way out again. You ain't no trees there to knock or nothing. Oh, for goodness sakes. Well, they done that in a story that I read one time. Well, you don't have to blaze a trail every time you go to the picture show. Well, I don't want to get lost, Lom. And this worked out good in this story I read. There was two young ones, and, and they was wandering around out in the woods, and, and they got lost, and... And then they seen their mama and a papa and, and a witch had come along. I again. know the story. Don't tell it to me. Wolf, too, I believe there was out there. Yeah, I know the story. And then they taken breadcrumbs and sprinkle them in the woods. I know what they done. Now, forget that and help me study up whereabouts we're going to get some music for the show. Some music? Yeah. Can't put in a picture show without music. You mean have a pie in there like they got in there at the county seat? Yeah. There's some more expense right there now, Lum. We go to buy hey, a pie You it. sure you want me to follow them instructions? Why, sure, Cedric. That's the only thing to do. Yes, Ma'am. Well, say, can I get some soda? Soda? Baking soda, you mean? Yes, yes Ma'am. I reckon that's the kind of one. Why, sure. There's some out there on that shelf right next to you. Take a block of that, Cedric. Yes, Ma'am. I see it. Well, I'll go back and work on them instructions some more. All right, Cedric. And what do you want soda for? Mm -hmm. His mama more than likely told him to get it. Oh. Don't forget to put it down on the book. No, no. But now about this music we're going to well, have. Well, Mama, what are we going to have to do about that? Just buy a pine? Well, if we can't rent one summers, we'll have to. We can't get nobody to stand up there and sing. Well, why do we have to have music for? They ain't going to dance or nothing in there. No, but you've got to have music along with the picture. Why? If it's a sad picture, we'll play some sad music. Oh. And if the hero's about to catch the vision, why, we want to play something real fast and exciting. We do, huh? Oh, this ain't no little old small-time show we're running, you know. Don't get that to run into money, though. We'll have to get somebody to play the pioneer, too. Well, naturally. You don't expect it to play itself, do you? Why, of course not. Huh? I dog is wait a minute. Maybe there's a ID, Lom. Why couldn't we get one of them player pioneers like Grandpappy Spears has got? Well, Granny, that's right. I hadn't thought about that. The fact is, we might rent that and offer him. I oh, don't think sure. him and Charity ever plays a thing. <laughs> well, sure, that might be just what we're looking Why? for. <laughs> we'll have to get some new rolls of music for it, though. Yeah. He ain't got but three rolls that I ever hear him play. Dardanelli and Steamboat Bill and Jada or... Well, he's got the Star Spangled Banner. 
I know he's always trying to stand up and pump them pedals at the same time while he plays it. I watched him do that lots of times. Well, we'll want that. And that'd be good patriotic thing to play at the show. Yeah, but we'd have the folks standing up half the time, Mom. Of course, then we'd just need half as many seats, I reckon. I know that that might be a pretty good idea. some grease. You you fellas got some grease? How's that, Sandwich? I need some grease, and then I'll be all ready to start trying to figure out how to work the machine. To figure it out? Ain't you figured that out yet? No, Mom. Well, what you been doing back there all this time? Just following the instructions like you told me to. Come on back and see how I'm doing. Doggis, maybe we better. Come on, Mom, let's get back there. Yeah, I don't know where we got the right kind of grease for him to use or not. Yeah, hey, what kind of grease do you want, Cedric? I don't know. The instructions don't say what kind. Well, it more like it just re- means regular. Oh, my it. goodness, Cedric, what are you doing there? Take that machine out of that pan of water. As far as I land, Cedric. And get it off the stove. What are you trying to do anyways? Ruin the machine? Help him get it out of there. Yeah, head. come on, come on, Cedric. Lift but it out of there. the instructions said to do this? They never said to boil it in water, I can tell oh, you that. Oh, well, this is sody water, though. Sody water? Yes, Mom. Just read the instructions for yourself there, right on the box there. What about? Right there. Oh, uh, warning. Before using, boil in sody and water. Then grease thoroughly. Well, I do know Cedric's right, Mom. Wait a minute. Look what else it says on that box. Huh? The Ajax Iron Skillet Company. Iron Skillet? Oh, that ain't the box the picture machine come in at all. I believe that's our ring. Hi, Dog Islam. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Down Store. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down at Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner now have a projection machine for their forthcoming motion picture theater. Remodeling of the old cotton warehouse is progressing quite well now. And today, they hope to make a deal with Grandpappy Spears to rent his player piano for the theater. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in their jot them down to our library waiting for Grandpappy. Well, I told him to get over here just as quick as he could. All right, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. There he comes right now, Mom. Oh, yeah, well, good. Now, just let me do the talking. Let you do it. Yeah, Grandpa's pretty hard to deal with. Oh. Got to handle him just right. Well, I don't think he's going to try to drive much of a bargain over that old player pie or his, Mom. You can't tell, though. Oh, more likely be glad to get a chance to get that thing out of the house. We can't take a chance, Abner. You know how short we are of money. Yeah, I know it, I know it. That's another thing. Where are we going to get the money to rent the pioneer with? That's what I want to know. Well, maybe we can get him down so low it won't make much difference. Well, because... he's going to want something, and that's more than we got, Ron. Well, in a month or two, we'll have all the money in the world we want. Be looking for places to spend it. We will, huh? Yeah, you just leave him to me. I'll use psychology on him. Use what on him? Psychology. I'll get him to where he'll want to rent us that player pioneer almost for nothing. Oh. You'll be begging us to do it. You wait and see. Well, I just hope so. I saw her. Mind out, mind out. Here he comes. Don't oh, let him hear us talking about him. You tell it all over town. Yeah, hey, honey, honey, honey. Yeah, hey, honey, Grandpap. Come on in and sit down, old boy. Yeah, make yourself comfort, yes, Grandpa. <laughs> here, take this comfort chair here. Yeah, Tom. yeah, take that chair along. Get out of there. Uh, me and Mom, uh... That cat hops in there every time somebody gets out of that chair. Uh, Grandpap, uh... Watch yourself. Don't get any of that cat hair on you there, Grandpap. Uh, me and Lum were sort of wanting to see you about a, well, a deal here. Uh, don't tell him what we want. Uh, uh, let me handle it now. Uh, uh, I ain't going to say nothing. Go ahead. Hey, what ain't in the world this pigeon toed prattle prattle going on here anyways? Oh, nothing, Grandpa. Well, what you said, Dad, blame nice to me for all of a sudden. We just like you. That's it. You're a fine fella. Proud to have you come down here at the store and visit with us. Just love to have you around. And Law wants to use some psychic knowledge on you, too. Abner. I hate you. Huh? Oh, excuse me. Grandpa, I've been thinking about you. Well, in fact, all of us think a lot about you. Oh, Especially yeah. around Christmas time, your birthday and all. Law talks about you all the time. I do, don't I? Yes, you do. You sure do that. And then I got to studying about this job you got, delivering telegrams for Dick Huddleston. There, that seems a shame. 
Shame. Well, here you are, getting along in years and still working for wages. Well, natural. Didn't expect me to work for nothing, did you? Why, of course not, no, Tom. You're no. wrong about that. No, but what I meant, uh, you're just living from day to day, you might say. You ought to have a regular income. Something coming in, whether you're just working or not. Yeah, that'd be a good idea, Grandpa. Yeah, yeah, it would be nice to have something like that, all right, a pension. Oh, it's the handiest thing at all to have money coming in. Like, say, for instance, if you had something you could rent for somebody. Yeah, that would be nice, but I ain't got nothing nobody would want to rent. Only thing I've got is my house, and if I rented that thing, I wouldn't have no place to live myself. Well, let's see. That is a problem, ain't it? You ought to have something over there you could rent. I know of something, Mom. What have you got that somebody might have some use for me study here? Well, don't you know, Mom? It's that player pioneer you Abner, know. would you please hash up to stay out of this? Yeah, I granny, that's right. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Glad you brought that up, Abner. Bung it up? Why, that's the whole idea. Hey, Getting... Shop. Have you got a player piney over there, Grandpap? Why, sure. You know I have. You saw it. Why, of course. That's right. Granny said forgot about it. Sure you have. <laughs> forgot it. I don't know who in the world would want to rent that pigeon toad thing, though. Well, there ought to be somebody around here that has some use for that. Let me study. Who could it be? Huh. I'd like to help you if I can, Grandpap. I know somebody, Long. Will you stay out of this, Abner? Well, all right, but I could save you all that thinking if you'd just let me wait, go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I believe I'm getting an idea. Huh. Yeah. All right, Granny, Abner, we ought to have some music of some kind down there in that picture show of ours. Well, I'll be dead gum long. You're the forgetfulest one fella I've ever seen in my life. Yes, sir, I'm proud I thought of that. Thought of it? Me and Abner might find some use for that pioneer down there at the show, Grandpap. You yeah, sure enough think so? Well, maybe. Of course, we couldn't pay much, but if it helped you out, no, oh, we'd be proud to rent it off of you. Wouldn't we, Abner? Just because we think so much of you. I reckon so, huh? Doggy, I ain't sure about nothing. You got me so mixed up here long. Mixed up? Why, sure. Me and you sat here and talked about the same thing not ten minutes ago, and now you don't appear to recollect a thing about it. Don't talk so much, Abner. Uh-huh. Grandpap, how much would, I mean, how little would you want to rent that pioneer for? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, Lum. I never had thought much about it. Never thought about nobody wanting to rent it, hardly. Well? Don't know what it's worth. Who is you not aiming on getting to pay it? Well, I reckon either me or Lum would run the thing, whichever one of us weren't busy at the time. Uh-huh. Well, I don't know. I don't believe I'd want to let it out that way, unless I'd done the playing of it myself. Unless you done it. Yeah. You see, everybody's got to play one of them player pioneers just so where it don't sound right. All you got to do is just put a roll of music on there and pump them pedals up and down. It plays itself, and you know what. That's just exactly what I allowed you to say, Abner. Well, natural. Average fella that don't know much about music could say the same thing. It was If you know the hours I put in practicing on that thing. Practicing? I've heard him. He's telling the truth. To play a player pioneer? Yes, sir. Yeah, there, there is hard to play right as the other kind is. Oh, yes, sir. Play play. Well, there's buttons around on it. you got to know just when to press them. you got to know when to play it soft and when to play it loud. Put feeling into the music. Well, I never had thought about it just that way, Grandpap. Well, it's wrote right on the music. says low and, and loud. But uh-huh. you got to keep your eye peeled for it. Well, I can read. I can do that. And another thing, a body's got to have strength to pedal clean through one of them rolls. He do, has he? Oh, yeah. Like Charity. Well, she always gives out. Uh-huh. Yeah. And when she's playing along at last, it gets sort of slow and the music sort of drags. Don't sound right. Oh. Uh-huh. Well, she just ain't got no talents for stuff like that. Yeah, I might. I used to get a Charlie horse in my left leg when I first started playing it. Well, I do, no. Hey, Grannies, I believe Grandpa's right. We want that music to sound right. Yeah, I never know there was so much to it that way. No, no. Let's see. Well, now. supposing we rented you and your pioneer both, then. Rented a uh, pioneer and hired you to play it. Yeah, like renting a team of mules, Grandpa. How much would you want for that, Grandpa? Yeah, let's uh, see. How many nights a week? Six nights, Monday through Saturday. Well, that'd keep me up past my bedtime, wouldn't it? Yeah, but you you get to see the show free, though. You'd get to do that. Yeah, yeah we, we wouldn't charge you nothing to see the thing. Oh, no, sir. There's 25 cents a night you'd make right there. My right, doggy, that ain't bad wages. That amounts to uh, right now a dollar and a half a week. Well, here's what I might do. Tell you, I'll furnish the piner and do the plan for $4 a week. $4? Yeah. 
Three dollars, Ann. Three dollars, huh? Well, just a minute. Yeah, let me and Abner have a little meeting about it. Come here, Abner. Yeah, yeah, excuse us, Grandpa. Don't be a little high. Long. Yeah, but recollect, that's the only player pioneer in town I know of. It's huh? a heap cheaper than buying one. Yeah, I reckon it is, yeah. Well, I guess we'll take you up on it, Grandpa. It's a deal, Grandpa. Yeah, I was just thinking here, I'm going to have to bring Charity along with me of a night. Couldn't leave her sitting there at home by herself. You mean you want to pass for her to get in free, too? Well, that's about the only way I can get out of a night. Oh. Well, all right, we'll pass your woman in free, too. <laughs> yeah, good. Now, what's worrying me is how we're going to get over there every night. Get over there? Yep. After dark that away, me or Charity won. Neither one can't half see to get around. Uh-oh. I was just thinking might get that nephew of mine to drive us over in his car. Why, sure, that's a thing to do. Just get Luke to drive you over there every night. Yeah, that's straight and that's the case. Yeah, that's a good idea you got there. Well, if I enter, deal's all settled then, I reckon. Yeah, all settled. All of course, we couldn't expect Luke to sit out there in the car and wait for me every night till the show's over. Oh, you mean you want to pass for Luke, too? Well, it just looks like there ain't no other way out of it, Abner. All right, Luke gets in for nothing, too, then. Yeah, if he can do it. If he can do it? Yeah, I don't know where Luke's going to be able to get out of a night without bringing his family along or not. Uh-oh. That woman of his won't hardly let him out of her sight. Now, uh, listen, Grandpa, if you're hinting for a pass for Luke and all them nine youngins of his, there ain't a thing doing, I'll tell you that right here and now. Yeah, well, suit yourself, Abner. I don't care. I'm just trying to help you fellas out. It don't matter to me. You was the one who brought up the subject of renting it. I can play the pigeon-toed pioneer over at my place just this way. Well. well, just go right ahead and play it over there. We ain't going to let the whole town in free just to get you to sit down there and play it. Well, there. now, wait a minute. Excuse us a second, Grandpa. Come here, Ed. All Another right. meeting. Well, he's just trying to get all his relays in for nothing. That's what he's doing. Yeah, it looks like he's got us. Why, sure. But we better close the deal with him before he thinks about that second cousin. He has a little on Brush Creek and his family. Oh, don't get inside. I forgot about the... Oh, it looks like we're going to have to bazaar the first two rows over there for the pioneer player. Well, I still say that's a heap cheaper than buying a new pioneer. Well, I don't know where it is or not. I don't think I'm for it. That's about all we can do. Let him go. Well, well Grandpap, we'll tell I mean, uh, you're hard. All them relates you mentioned just passes. But no more of them now. Of course, I still think you're a little high on your price, Grandpap. Yeah, high is right. Well, I'm a hitch like you said a while ago. I never had thought about it just that way. But a man getting up my age, working for wages, just living from day to day, you might say, he ought to have a regular income, something he can depend on. Yeah. And then, too, I'll have to dress myself up a little if I'm going to preform every night. Uh Ah. And, of course, uh... There's Charity. I don't want her to look dowdy. Well, no, you ought to dress up. Sure, Grandpa. Well, maybe you better give me about uh, three months' salary in Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. I don't get Lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John I'm Down Store. This is Lum and Abner. Hello. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner hired Grandpappy Spears to play the player piano at their moving picture theater yesterday. But the deal cost them more than they expected. They wound up by giving passes to all of Grandpap's near and distant relatives. As we look in on the little community today, we find motion picture executive Lum in the Jotham Down store and library. He's talking on the telephone. Oh, that's all right, Jeff. Perfect all right. Proud to do it for you. How's that? Oh, yeah, any night. Yeah, the pass is good for any night at the picture show. Uh, Not so loud. Uh Uh-oh, excuse me. Yeah, all right then, Jeff. Hope you get a lot of enjoyment out of that. Uh Uh-huh. Not at all. Goodbye. You hope Jeff gets a lot of enjoyment out of what, Lum? Why, uh... Oh... Nothing. Hey, did he buy himself a new gramophone or something? No, it's nothing, Aaron. Just forget about it. 
Huh? There's something I want to talk to you about. It's about Cedric and the moving picture machine. Yeah, well, there's something I want to talk to you about, too, Long. You know that new woman that moved into the boarding house? Yeah. What about her? Well, I was talking to her today. Did you ever see a prettier pair of blue eyes in your life than she's got? I never noticed her eyes. Sort of baby blue. Uh, uh, right in twixt baby blue and hazel blue, I believe you'd call Yeah, well, I don't know what you'd call them, Long, but I I happened talk- to be over at Dick Hudson's store yesterday when she come in there. Dick introduced her and me, and we had a long talk with one another. Must have lasted for five minutes. Uh-huh. Well, anyway, I was talking to her, too, and you know that she's got a past our picture show. She has. Here's a woman that's practical, a stranger, just been here in town a couple of days, and already she's got a past our picture show. Well, I do know. I reckon where she could have got that. Yeah, reckon where she could have. Here she is, a complete stranger, just gotten to... All right, doggies, wait a minute. Huh? You said you talked to her, didn't you, Long? Well, yeah, I believe I did talk to her a little, a couple of seconds. Said howdy do's about all. All right, doggies, and you must have been the one that gave her the pass. Me? Why, sure, me and you are the only ones that's got them, and I know I never give her none. Oh. Yeah, I believe I did give her something. Huh? Yeah, I think it was a pass to the show now that you mentioned. That's just about what I figured. Now, what'd you have to go and do that for long? Well, I don't know. I just, uh... Well, here she is, a complete stranger in town. I figured that would sort of make her feel at home here. Hmm. Just wanted to show her that Pine Ridge is a friendly city. Ah. Uh-huh. Wanted to show her that, uh... Well, that Pine Ridge is a friendly city. Yeah, you said that. Oh. Well, about Cedric now. He's been studying and on that machine. And another thing, now, there's Cedric. You give him a pass so he can get in free for nothing. Well, he has to. He's going to run the films for us. He can't stand outside the theater and do that, can he? He's got to be there and see if he's got the picture on the screen straight or upside down. There weren't no use in giving passes to his mom and papa. They ain't going to run it. Oh, well, it ain't going to hurt none, Abner. His folks wouldn't come out to see the show if they had to pay no how. So we ain't losing nothing, you might say. Well, maybe not, Lum, but you're going to have that place full every night with folks that ain't paying nothing to get in. Now, when we started out, you said you weren't going to give no passes to nobody. Did I say that? Yes, sir. That's right, I did that. Yes, sir. But you have to make a few exceptions, Abner. It's just good business is all. It ain't good business if we don't take in no money because everybody's getting in on a pass, Long. There's Grandpappy Spears, for incident. You give him a pass and all his relays for ten mile around. Well, Grandpap's a pioneer player. Don't forget that. I know he is, Long. But then I was over at the cotton warehouse a while ago talking to them carpenters, and they said you promised all them a pass, too, if they'd rest that remodeling work, too. Did I tell them that? That's what they said. Huh? Yeah, seems like I did say something like that yesterday. Yeah, I might have said that. Might have? Now, you know good and well you said it, Lord. Well, that'll just get the warehouse remodeled into a theater lots quicker, Abner. You got to admit that's important, getting it done quicker. Well, maybe I don't know, Lord, but how about Moe's Moves? He's telling me down there at the barber shop that you give him one, too. Moe's Moves? Yes, sir, Moe's Moves. Oh, yeah, him. Yeah, I had to give him one. Had See, to? I rented them folding chairs from the lodge hall over there, and Mose had charge of them. He's a high-up officer in the lodge, you know. I know that. So natural, I had to give him one. What I done was use that for bait to get him to rent us the chairs. <laughs> well, his warming and little Mose, they never had charge of the chairs, too, did they? Well, no, but you can't give a man a pass and expect him to leave his family at home or sitting out in the car. Well, I reckon not, but... Just looks like everybody I see, I ask them for coming to our show when we get opened up, and they say, sure, I got a pass. Hmm. Looks to me like we ain't going to have no room for the cash customer. Oh, yes, we will. There's plenty of room for them. I don't know where to be. Unless it's outside the building where they couldn't see the picture in old ways. be right inside the building. Good seats, too. Hmm. Don't forget that we're renting 200 chairs. I know I ain't give out that many passes. No. Oh. I bet you give out an awful lot of them, though. You see, Abner, you just don't understand about business stuff. That's the trouble with you. Huh? See, these folks that's getting in for nothing will be good advertisements for us. You gonna put a card on their back or something? No, no. We'll use them for decoy sorters. Lom, are we run a picture show or going duck hunting? Folks around town here will be sitting out on their front gallery every evening. In this when... cold weather? Well, they'll be sitting in their parlors then, looking out the front windows. And... How do you know they will? Well, I just know they will. 
Anyway, they'll see this big crowd going by. They'll be back in the kitchen sitting around the cook stove. Well, wherever they're at, they'll see this big crowd of folks going by. What big crowd? Them folks that's getting in free on passes. Oh, yeah, that'll be a big crowd, yeah. And see, when the other folks see them uh, on their way to the show, uh, the first thing you know, they'll all get up and follow them. Wonder where they're going. Yeah, more likely they'll see so many going down there, they'll figure there won't be no setting room for them and they'll stay home. Oh, well, now, then, them folks with passes ain't all going to go to the picture show every night, Abner. <laughs> let's, let's not talk about this no more. There's something more important to discuss. That's about Cedric. That don't beat all. His woman and young'uns get passes. Yes, sir. All the time. Moles, moose, and his woman and young'un coming in free. Carpenters free. Everybody Abner, free. I said we're discussing Cedric now. He's been studying on that moving picture machine for several days now, and I'm feared he ain't never going to catch on to how to run the thing. He just don't seem to get the hang of it. So I figured we better decide what we ought to do about it. What do you think we ought to do? All right, doggies. Give him Cedric's mom and papa. Moles, moots, and his young. All right, Granny Zabner, I told you we were done through discussing that subject. Give him that new woman in town a pass. A complete stranger. I told you why I done that. <laughs> Besides, I might want to take her to the picture show some night myself. It wouldn't look right for me to walk up to the ticket window and buy a ticket for her from myself. Well, it just looks like, Lom, we might as well just put a big sign up down there saying, Free show! Doggies, there you want me to take up tickets and ain't going to be nobody to take them up from. Well, Abner, I can't run the show if you're going to be complaining about everything I do. Huh. Uh, we've got to decide which one of us is boss and let him run the whole thing. Decide which one of us is boss? Yes, sir. I got one of us in mind that I think would make us an awful good man for the job. Yeah, I got a pretty good idea who that is, too. I'm glad we agree on one thing, anyhow. I never said nothing about agreeing on it, Lom. I just said I knowed who you had in mind. Well, don't you think he'd make a good one? No, sir, I don't think he knows a thing about running a picture show, and I ain't going to stand for it one minute. All right, then. No, sir. That's the way you feel about it. That's just exactly the way I feel. I reckon we just have to let the other one have it, then, for... There ain't but two of us. Why, sure, that's a time. Let the other one have it. Yes, sir. I just figured that you'd make a better man than I would, but if you don't want it, why, I'll take it. Anything to be agreeable. Well, I don't... Huh? You was the one I had in mind to run it, but if you've got your head set on me doing it, well, I'll do the best I can with it. Well, I'll be that dumb. But I don't want you butting in on every little thing I do. Well, I ever learn to keep my big mouth shut. And now that we got that all settled, let's discuss what we're going to do about getting somebody to run that moving picture machine. Beat myself on top of the head. Uh, well, here, when I come in here just a little bit ago, Lom, you was telling Jeff the butcher on the phone there that you hope he enjoyed something. Did you give him a pass, too? Of course I did. Oh, my. It's a good idea to be on the good side of the butcher nowadays. <laughs> and besides that, I'm the boss now, and I told you to stop butting in on everything I do. Now, do you understand that? Yes, sir. You'll see that my giving out of them passes is the best one thing I could have did. Keep my mouth shut. You'll get the picture show started quicker and make everything run smooth. You just wait and see. I'll wait. I believe that was our ring there, though. But you get it. I want to study on this Cedric situation. All right, all right, all right. Hello, Jotham down store and library, Abner Peabody doing the talking, the big mouth. Huh? Yeah, he's here. Just a minute. Here, Lom. Uncle Henry Lunsford, the town marshal. Oh, good. Let me talk to him. Well, wait, I, I think he's more likely mad at you, Long. Mad at me? Yeah, I forgot to tell you, but early this morning he called up here and claimed we was breaking some kind of a law because we never got a building permit or something before we started remodeling that warehouse. Granny's, I forgot all about that. Well, it won't matter none, though. I, I've practically fixed that up already. Huh? I stopped by the jailhouse a while ago, and Uncle Henry weren't there, but I left a pass for him and his sister Sylvia. Left a pass for him? Yeah. You see, I told you giving out them passes was going to help us. Here, give me the receiver. Yeah, all right, here. Yeah. Hello, Uncle Henry, old boy. This is Lom. <laughs> Talk. That's what huh? I'm to do. do what to me? Oh, well, oh. Well, now, wait a minute, Uncle Henry. What do you mean, trying to get around taking out a building permit? Well, sure, I was the one that left them passes for you. Of course I admit it. Wait a minute. Well, you can't do that. You can't arrest me for bribing an officer of the law. Now, wait a minute. Hello? Hello? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, them passes, they'll make everything run smooth. But if I was you, Lom, I believe I'd carry a few of them around my pocket for the warden when I got to the penitentiary. <laughs> Rennie's, Abner, I believe that's our ring. I know, Islam, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, everything in connection with Lum and Abner's proposed moving picture theater is proceeding according to schedule, with the possible exception of the problem of finding someone to operate the projection machine. Cedric was slated for the job, but so far he has been unable to master the mysteries of the machine. As we look at on the little community today, we find the old fellows in their jot em down store and library discussing the theater. Well, if Eugene Blevins and them other carpenters has just about got the floor all down over at the warehouse lawn, well, maybe we ought to start getting them chairs from the lodge hall and setting them up over there and get started. Well, we can't get them till after next Tuesday night. After next Tuesday? Yeah, see, that's when the regular bi-monthly lodge meeting's being held. Well, law me, are we going to have to tote all them chairs clean back to the lodge hall every Tuesday night? No, but this meeting next Tuesday is for the election of Oscars, and they generally have eats at it. Oh. So they always have a big turnout for that. Yeah, yeah. That's why they'll need all them chairs. Yeah, I see, I see. The rest of the time, they more than likely won't need them, because they don't have much of a turnout for the generality of their meetings. Well, I'm proud to hear that. <laughs> Dog that I'd hate to be toting them things backwards and forwards all the time, anyway. Of course, I reckon a fella could just unfold one of the chairs and... Sit down and rest yourself whenever it gets tarred. Yeah, or, yeah. It'd be a heap better than toting pioneers backers and forwards, I believe. I'll take the chair. Well, you ain't going to gonna have to tote neither one backers and forwards, so don't worry about it. Oh. Except maybe when they're having special meetings at the lodge. Special ones, huh? Then we'll more than likely have to loan the chairs back to them. But we'll just close up the picture show them nights. Well, what nights will that be? Well, I don't know. Oh. Well, can't you find out? Well, I don't know how. Well, I wish you would, Lom, because that's liable to cost me a lot of money if you don't. Cost you money? Why, sure. Well, how do you figure that? Well, see, I'm aiming on going down there to the picture show every night. That's all right. You can do that. And I'll have me a good seat right down there in front, and I'll look at the picture show every night of the world. Nobody ain't going to stop you from doing that. You're half owner of the show. You get in free for nothing. Yeah, but you know, I've been having a little trouble with my eyes here late, ever since you brought me them new glasses from Hot Springs, you know. Yeah, I know that, but I don't see what that's got to do with this. Well, it's got a whole lot to do with it. Of course, I'll tell you one thing. It ain't the glasses that's hurting your eyes. Ain't hurting. Because I never got them out of the regular 10-cent box. Picked them out of that 25-cent ones. Oh, oh. Well, I don't reckon it's the glasses, then. It's just my eyes. That's what it is. Elizabeth sort of worried about them, too, she says. Yeah, you ain't let them get set to your eyes yet. No. Them oh. headaches you've been having and ain't got a thing in the world to do with it. Hey, honey, it ain't the glasses. No, well, I, you can tell you need them, because look how red your eyes is. Yeah, hey, I know. They're just sure. blood red. Shows, look. shows how bad you need them. Oh, yeah. Look like I'm bleeding to death through the eyes all the time. Maybe right you there. just ain't got the bowls bent right so that they fit your ears good. Well, it might be. I'll try them two or three different ways. But anyway, if I don't know what nights the show's going to be closed, why, I'll go over there unbeknownst whether the show's going to be on or not. And I'll sit there and... When I don't see no picture on the screen, why, I'll just start figuring right away if there's something wrong with my eyes. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. Now, that asthma you've been having, I think you let them glasses slide too that fur down on your nose and it, and it sort of smothers you. Reckon that's what's doing it? Why, sure. Well, it might be. I'll raise them up a minute. But anyway, what long, when I figure that I've just about went plumb blind over at the picture show overnight, why, then I'll start out the door and crawl all the way home on my hands and knees. Crawl and... home? Why, sure. I ain't gonna stand up and take a chance on bumping into nothing. Then I'll get Elizabeth to hire somebody to drive me into the county seat. And well, what are you going in there for? To get me some new spectacles, natural. 
I'll have to hire the fella to drive me back to Pine Ridge. More than likely, even have to buy his lunch while we're in there. He always gets hungry. I'll lose a whole day's work here at the store. I tell you, Lama, he wants to eat every day, huh? All that time. All that hungry. Never seen nobody like him. That well, just him calm yourself way. down, because you won't have to go to none of that trouble. Huh? Anytime we close up the picture show, I'll let you know a day or so in advance. Well, I hope you do, Lum. I just can't stand that expense. Especially the way we've been spending money on this picture show of ours here. Well, we're just about to the end of our spending now. Well, they're coming out even. I'm about to the end of the money, too. And then we'll start taking in money so fast we won't know what to do with it, hardly. Well, I hope so, Lum. We just can't go on this way much longer. I'll tell you that right now. And if we'll make so much money, they'll start listing our names in the newspapers every year, telling how much salaries we made during the year. Will they, sure enough? Of course they will. That's what they do with a lot of us big moving picture executives. If that ain't just my luck. Here, I've always wanted to see my name in a big newspaper, and now I won't get to see it. <laughs> won't get to see it? Of course not. Not with my eyes stay on me like there. Somebody has to Wait read it. Wait a minute. Me. Your eyes are all right to see with. There. Why, sure. Well, they can't be, Lum. Why'd I go to all that trouble to hire a fella to drive me into the county seat so that I could get some new spectacles for them? You never done that. Huh? You were just imagining that's what you'd do if you went to the show some night when it weren't on and got to thinking your eyes had went bad. Oh, is that all? Why, sure. Well, I better call that feller up then and tell him not to come over here and get me. Let's see what's his ring now. Abner, get away from that phone. Dog, as you know, Lum, I can't even think of what his name is. Must be getting absent-minded, too. Abner, he ain't got no name. See, Why, he you... must have, Lum. Everybody I know's got a name. I wouldn't call up nobody I didn't know. Let's see who Abner, you never give him no name. I know I never give it to him. Mom and Papa more than likely done that. Dog, as I can't even think what it started For with. For goodness sake. Was it Charlie Redfield, No, Lum? of course not. Well, I didn't think it was. He ain't even got no car. I wouldn't call him. Let's see who Abner, is it Abner, if you now. just let me explain this to you, you It wouldn't... weren't Cedric, was it, Long? No, Cedric's right back there in the feed room. It weren't him. There ain't no phone back there. Still trying to learn himself how to run that moving picture machine. And I'm feared he ain't never going to do it, neither. Let's see now. Who could that have been? Abner, I don't believe you realize how serious it is that Cedric ain't learning how to do that. Why, well, he'll catch on to it, Lum. Mechanical mind like he's got. Who was it I called? That's what I want to know. Abner, forget that nonsense and come on back in the feed room and I'll show you what I mean about Cedric. Come on. Mm, all right. Maybe he'll recollect who it was I called him out of here, me. It's going to be a fine thing if we get this picture show all built and get a house full of customers and then not have nobody to run the picture machine. Now, doggy Cedric does look like he's working awful hard at that. Look at there, Lum. Oh, he works hard enough at it. Just ain't getting no place. So. Yeah, how are you coming along there, Cedric? Mom, oh, you scared me half to death. Uh -huh. Hello, Mr. Abner. Hey, excuse me. Are you learning how to run that machine yet? Well, there's a couple of things that still got me stumped, I think. A couple of things, yes, huh? Yes, Mom. One of them is, uh, how do you get it to work? Oh. Uh -huh. I forget now what the other one is. Well, I believe that first one's the important one anyway, Cedric. Yes, Mom. I've turned every switch and pushed every button and twisted every handle on this thing, but nothing makes it work, seems like. Hmm. I picked it up and shook it like you do when a clock won't run, but even that don't do no good neither. Well? Well, Cedric, I don't want you picking up that machine and shaking it. We paid a lot of money for that thing. Yes, Mama. I wish it worked like a pinball machine. I can work one of them things good. Yeah, well, it ain't no pinball machine, Cedric. Well, what you do with one of them is just put a nickel in it and pull a handle yeah, we back. We know how they work, Cedric. We know that. Yes, Mama. Well, that ought to give you an idea what we're up against, Abner. Yeah, well, I sort of see what you mean. Yeah, man. come on. Let's go on back to the front of the store. I might have an idea. Yeah, I've got to study anyway. Do you want me to keep working on this, Mr. Long? Well, yeah, but be careful with it. Yeah, don't pick it up and shake it and stuff like that now, Cedric. No, Mom, I won't. Hardly much. Any? What's this idea you said you had, Long? Well, I don't want to say nothing in front of Cedric, but it just looks like we're going to have to get somebody else to run that thing. Well, who can we get around here? I don't know. But I thought maybe we called up the manager of the Lyric Theater there in the county seat. He might know somebody we could get. Yeah, that's a good idea. Call him up. Tell him we want somebody cheap, though, Lum. We yeah. can't spend no more money. Long distance. Not very long. He ought to know somebody. H Hello, Mamie. This is Lum. Would you... Oh, I'm fine. Would you ring me the Lyric Theater, please, Mom? wonder if she'd know who I call. Ma? Oh, Abner's just fine, too. Hurry up with the call, Mamie. Granny, you know, I don't even know that fella's name. The man that runs a the theater? Yeah. 
Mr. Lyrics, ain't he? No, it's just the name of the show. There's a big sign out there. Uh, well, Mr. I didn't mean Mr. Jot him down, Stuart. You just got wait a minute. Hello, Mr. Larry. I mean, uh, are, are you the manager of the theater? I know my name, Mike. Well, this is Lum Edwards out at Pine Ridge. No, I ain't that absent, Mike. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the machine you sold us is fine, but we wonder if you know somebody we could hire to run it for us. Abner, see what is mine. Oh, I see. Peabody. Can't it. hardly find one yourself, huh? I know it, I know it. Yeah. How's that? Why, well, yeah, that's a good idea. You sure that wouldn't bother you none? Well, fine, then. Yeah, next Monday will be fine. Well, good weather report. Well, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, much obliged to you, Mr. Lick. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, uh, thanks an awful lot. Goodbye. That next Monday be fine for what, Lum? <laughs> uh, Granny, he said we could send somebody in there and let them sit around in his theater and watch them run their machine. Learn it that way. Well. Said it oughtn't to take more than a week to catch them to... You mean we'll send uh, Cedric into the county seat for a week? <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. Ain't that fine? Well, of course, sure. it might take him a little longer than a week, slow like he is now. Yeah, well, he can't go anyway, Long Cedric. I just happen to think he's got that job over at the defense plan. He can't be there. Oh, yeah, Granny's I plumb forgot about that. And besides, that takes money to send a fella in there for a week, pay his board and room. I don't believe we can afford it, Long. Yeah, I reckon you're right. Hadn't thought about the money, neither. Just looks like everything's again us ever getting our picture show opened up. Yeah, it does. Uh, wait a minute. I know it. I believe I got an idea on I know who we can send in there, and it won't cost us nothing to send him neither. It wouldn't? No, sir. He, he's got to go in there anyway, Long. Well, good. Who is it? Me. You? Yes, sir, me. Well, wait a minute. What do you have to go to the county seat for? Well, don't you recollect to get them spectacles? A done harder fella to tote me in there. I better call him up right now and tell him to postpone that till next Monday, too. I believe that's our ring. I right, dog is Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well... After Cedric failed to figure out how to run the projection machine, the old fellows purchased for their theater, Lum made arrangements for Abner to go to the county seat next week and learn how to operate the machine from the projectionist at the Lyric Theater. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in their jot em down store and library. Abner is arranging things in a suitcase. For goodness sakes, Abner, you don't have to get your satchel all packed today. You ain't leaving till Monday. I know I ain't long, but I just hate that last-minute rash. Hate and despise it. Well, you'll have plenty of time. And another thing, I, I don't see what you're taking so much stuff along with you for. Granny, you ain't gonna go but 22 miles. Yeah, but I'll be gone for a week. That's six whole days right there, dog. Is where'd I put that toothbrush now? Toothbrush? I could have swore I had it here not two seconds ago or something. Well, you still got it. You're holding it in your hand. I there. just hope I ain't lost it. It's a green handle. Yeah, I told you it's right Never there. Never mind. I'll find it myself. It's got to be around here somewhere. I know I've never has. seen you so excited before in my life. Oh, me. I did think you'd never taken a trip before. What are you so excited for? I ain't excited. You ain't, huh? Oh, of course not. Well, how come not. you got your vest on the inside out there? Well, I would... Huh? How oh, in the world could you ever get it buttoned up that way? Well, I do know. I reckon how come me to do a thing like that. I never done nothing like that before in my whole life. Well, I believe you better just sit down in that rocker there and calm yourself down. Let's see now. Uh... You're acting like a frog sitting on a hot stove. Go on, now. Sit down and pull yourself together. Well, wait Look a minute. Look here, old red in the face there. You excited to death. I ain't excited no such a thing. i got to check through my satchel again, make sure i got everything. Look at that, you're perspiring. Oh, me, oh, me. Let's see what all i got in here now. Let me see, let me For see. For goodness sake, you've checked through that thing a thousand or a hundred times already. And besides, you've got till Monday to do that. Overshoes, muffler, oranges, cap with earmuffs, heavy socks. Oh, uh, one, too, goodness. 
Now, where do you think you're going anyway, to the North Pole? Well, it might turn awful cold any day. Elizabeth said it might. Now, since when did Elizabeth get to be a weather profiteer? Well, she's worried about me. She don't want me to take down sick when I'm so far away from home where she can't be there to take care of me. So far away from home? 22 miles. Granny, you could walk that if you had to. Handkerchief, shoe polish, flannel night shirt, bed socks, picture Elizabeth, middle pearl, bananas. Bananas? Huh? Them things are going to be in fine shape by next Monday. Oh, well, it's might nigh impossible to get them now, Lom. More than likely, I wouldn't be able to get any on Monday. Have to get them things when you can. Let's see now. Ought to take along some books to read, too, I reckon. Books? Uh, yeah, yeah. And you need to read a book clean through in your whole life. Well, I know, but I always like to take a couple of books along on a trip, just in case I do decide to take up reading. Hmm. Fact says I did read a whole book once, or almost all of it, that... Love novel we got in the library, that Love Twix Golden Strands. All you done with that was just read the first couple of chapters and then looked at the end of it to see how it come out. Well, that's all you read a book for, ain't it? Just to see how it comes out. Believe I'll take Gilbert the Boy Trapper along with me this time. That always looked interesting to me. You need to take Gilbert or somebody along with you to tote all that trash you're aiming on taking. Here's another book we got I've always wanted to read, too. That uh, there's that uh, The Last of the Moccasins there. Must have had quite a run on them things to sell them all out. Must have had a fire sale or something, I reckon. That's the last of the Mohegans, not the moccasins. Oh. Uh, well, what are Mohegans? I don't know, but I know they ain't nothing you wear on your feet. Ain't, huh? Oh, more than likely a coat or a cape or a Spanish show. Anyway, you ain't going to have time to sit around and read no books, I can tell you that right now. You're going to be at the Lyric Theater there learning how to run a moving picture machine. All the time? Well, as much as the time as they'll let you hang around there and watch them. Recollect, this is a business trip you're making, not a pleasure trip. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's all right. That's all right, Mom. Well, I'll get it. More than likely, Eugene Blevins calling about some of that carpenter work he's doing for us over the warehouse. Oh, let's see. I better check through this satchel again, too. All right. Hello, John. I'm down store in the library. Lum Edwards, moving picture executive talking. Here there's some baked sweet potatoes. Mom? Oh, yes, he's here. Let's see. All right, Elizabeth. Yeah. Want to speak with him? Oh, oh right yeah, just a minute. I'll ask him. Abner? Huh? Your woman, Elizabeth, oh. wants to know if you recollected to put in them two pair of heavy underwear. Yeah, yeah, I'll put them in. Oh, I believe I did. I'll, I'll check through here to be sure. Hello, Elizabeth. Yeah, he says... Uh, he... Wait a minute, Lom. Wait a minute. No, because I don't see them here nowhere. Just a minute, Elizabeth. I was sure them things was here. I recollect picking them up just as plain as if it was only this morning. Well, make up your mind. In and out. In uh-huh. and out. Let me look through here now. I'll check here good. Just see. Don't see them here nowhere. More than likely just forgot to put them in. They must still be in your room at home. Hello, Elizabeth. Abner ain't got them here, so they must be at home there, Summers. Yes, Mom, do that. All right, Elizabeth. No, not at all. Goodbye. Now, what could I did with them things? They ain't here, short of For sakes, Abner. That ain't nothing to worry about. You got till Monday to find them. Huh? Besides, it ain't hardly cool enough for long underwear yet, no way. I can recollect picking them things up. Both pair of them. Now, what could I have did with them? What well, did tell I... Tell him what you might have did with them. The condition you've worked yourself up into. You're going to be a nervous wretch before you ever leave town. I just hope I ain't lost them. Them's the only two good pair I got, too. I better check through this satchel again. It might be down there in the bottom. Somewhere. Abney, you're going to wear that thing out checking through it. Now, just sit down and catch your breath. And you're starting to get all flushed in the face. I am. Why, sure. Sweat's just a rolling off your... Pardon, sir. Right, dog as it is, ain't it? Yeah, you're more than likely fussed around where you got yourself a fever. Now, sit down and rest for a second. Well, that might be a good idea. And maybe I can recollect whereabouts I put them things. Let me think now. No, don't even think about that. Forget about this trip of yours altogether. There's a whole weekend before you have to leave. And there's a lot of stuff we can get done on that picture show in that time. I might have got mixed up and put them things right back in the dresser drawer. Just about what I've done. Just All right, about. let it go at that. Just forget it, Abner, and concentrate on the picture show. For instance, did you know anything about collecting them old tin cans like I told you? Why, yeah, you told me to collect them, Long. Well, did you do it? Ah, uh, let's see now. Don't you recollect I told you to get a batch of big ones that we can use for reflectors at the theater? Reflectors? I told you about it. Eugene said he couldn't buy no regular reflectors for the electric lights because he never had no priorities for them. So I told him we'd get some old tin cans and polish them up good and use them. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Just as good. Yeah, I recollect now. Yeah, I recollect. Well, have you rounded up any so far? Oh, uh, 
Let's see now. What did I do about that? Let me think now. Uh, For goodness sake. I, I believe you're losing your mind today, Abby. No, I know, I know. I, I told Cedric to go out and collect all he could. That's what I done. Told Cedric to do it. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, it's better not doing nothing about it. Yeah, that's what I done. That's what I done. Let's see now. What could I have done with them things? Uh, I dog it. Maybe you are right, Lom. I believe I am getting a fever. Just feel my head here, Lom. Oh, you're all right, Abner. I never meant that serious. Well, I must have one. I've never been so hot in all my life. I'm having hot chills. That's what I'm having. Well, I wouldn't wonder the way you've been fussing around here today. Just feel my head, Lom. I might have a typhoon fever for all I know. Oh, no, you ain't. Huh. Your head is pretty hot. Oh, I'm just burning up. I might have the yellow fever and the black fever both. Elizabeth was right when she said I might take sick. She was right. Well, That's I don't hard. think you're sick, Abner. Just sit still there for a while and cool off. I believe you'll be all right. Oh, not with these hot chills I'm having. I'll eat better call Doc Miller. Just hope he gets here before I die. That's all Abner, you ain't going to die. I'm just burning up, Lom. Starting a first fire or something wonderful. I'll never make it to the county seat next Monday. I won't last that long. I'll never make uh, it. Just a minute. I'll call Doc Miller. Yeah, then. call him, Lom. Yeah, sort of getting red in the face. Call him right away. Tell him to hurry. Oh, me, I'm a sick man. Or wait a minute, there comes Squire Skim. I don't want to see him. I want to see a doctor, Lom. That's who well, I need. I'll get shut of Squire as quick as I can. Just hold on, Abner. Oh, my. Oh, me. Oh, my. Well, man. howdy, Squire. Well, gentlemen, gentlemen, how are you today, Abner? Don't ask him that, Squire. Oh, he ain't feeling his level best today. Mm, well, that's too bad. But what's the trouble? Oh, just a little bit. I'm egg. dying. That's the trouble with me, Squire, dying. No, it ain't that bad. But I thought I'd call Doc Miller just to be on the safe side, you know. Yes, yes, it's the best to play safe, from. Well, I'm sorry to hear this. If there's anything I can do, Lum, why, be sure and call me. Yeah, well, that's mighty thoughty of you, Squire. I'm sorry I can't stay any longer now, but I've got to rush back. I just dropped in long enough to congratulate you men and to give you this ribbon. Give us a ribbon? Yes, uh, for winning uh, first place in the salvage drive. Oh, the salvage drive. Yes, you see, I'm chairman of it, Lum, and I was going to give the ribbon to Cedric Weehan, but then he told me that you men were the ones who'd sent him out to collect the tin cans and... Tin cans? Yes, so I guess the ribbon goes to you. By George, I believe that boy must have picked up every tin can in town. Yes, sir, did a marvelous job. And as head of the salvage committee, I want to thank you personally for your fine contribution to our drive. Well, wait a minute, though, Squire. Then oh, cut, 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 now, Lum. You deserve this. You helped the war effort along tremendously. Tin, you know, plays a vital part in our war weapons. And in the cases they use for sulfur drugs and blood plasma and all that. In fact, you could say that the lives of our boys overseas uh, depend on tin. Well... Yeah, I hadn't thought about that before. But... And to meet that need for tin, we've got to get every housewife in America to cooperate, to turn in her old tin cans. And they've got to do it not just this week or next week, but every week, too. Yeah, but a few of them cans, them big ones... Big we... ones, little ones, we need all sizes. Well, congratulations again, Lum. It's men like you that America looks to for leadership and patriotism. Mm -hmm. We're all proud of you. Well, good for us. Uh, well, I've got to get back over the place. Hope you get well soon, Abner. Well, so long, Lum. Yes, yeah, so long, Squire. Oh, it looks like we ain't going to have no reflectors, but I reckon we have did something a whole lot more important. Uh, Lom, can't you do something about these hot chills of mine? I don't believe I can last till Doc Miller gets here. I'll never make well, it. Here, I'll unloosen your vest and unbutton your shirt a little. I don't know if I ought to do that or not. Well, do it anyway, Lom, before I suffer and keep myself. I just can't stand All right. it. Now, you ever got this vest on this way? I'll never know. Hold oh, still. Oh, I can't oh, unbutton you. Oh, me, sick man. Better listen to my chest, too, Lum, like Doc Miller does. See if you can hear my heart working in there. That thing might have melted right down the stop for all I know, as hot as I am. Put these buttons here on your shirt. Oh. 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 Well, I was one too good. Hey, what's the matter? If I turn yellow or something? If that don't beat the bugs are fighting. Uh -huh. So that's where you put them. That's where I put what, Lum? No wonder you're having hot flashes. There's that long underwear you lost. You got on both pair of them.
Uh, Granny Zabner, I believe that's our ring. I don't get long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. <laughs> Let's see what's going on down at Pine Ridge. Well, this is the day that Abner leaves for the county seat to learn how to operate the new motion picture projection machine. Lum is staying in Pine Ridge to push along the work on the proposed theater. As you look at the little community today, we find Grandpappy Spears, Cedric, and Lum in the Jotham Downs store, having just said goodbye to Abner, who's leaving on the mail hack for the county seat. Cedric, shut that pigeon toed door. You're letting a draft in here. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Grandpath. <coughs> I was just watching Mr. Abner getting in the mail hack. Well, I don't care what you're watching. That air's cold. By the way, Mom, when did you start using that door? Seems like you still had the screen door on last time I was in here. When did you take it down? Huh? Oh, uh, yesterday. Had to do it myself, too. Abner's been so excited about this trip of his to the county seat to learn how to run our moving picture machine, and he ain't hardly been able to think, let alone do any work around here. Packed his bag and unpacked it a hundred or a thousand times, I know. That's why we're kind of late taking the screen door down this year. Hey, you ought to watch that, Lum. Folks around here with an awful lot of dependence in that door. What do you mean by that, Grandpap? Well, folks sort of wait for that sign. When they see your screen door come down, why, they go home and get out their long underwear and they put different oil in their automobiles and put new tar paper around their houses. That sounded like your ring there, I think, Mr. Lowe. Yeah, might have been. I'll get it. Uh, hello, jot them down, store and library. Lum Edwards, moving picture executive talking. Oh, yeah, Elizabeth. Huh? Oh, yeah, he got started all right. Just now caught the mail hack. Mom? Oh, for goodness sake, forgot his umbrella, huh? I knowed he'd forget something. Well, I reckon he can get along without that all right. Why, sure he can. Well, I wouldn't worry about him now. He'll be all right. No, I don't know where he's aiming on staying, Elizabeth. Mom? Well, I reckon you could, uh... Send it to him and carry the Lyric Theater in there. Lyric Theater. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no, no, he won't sleep there, but he'll be there most of the day. Leastways, that's what he's supposed to do. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, just don't worry about him. He's all right. <laughs> of course he is. You're all right, Elizabeth. Goodbye. Thank you. Ain't got out of town good, and his woman already started worrying about him. And that's, that's the trouble with having a woman for a wife. They always got to be worrying about something. You'd think Abner was her four-year-old boy instead of her man. Sometimes I wonder why fellas ever gets married at all. Take, for instance, the case of Gessmer Butte. I just wonder, goodness, that... Put, wait a minute. Who is that coming up out there? How's that, Lum? Look out there in front, of Grandpab. That ain't Granville Watts from over Cherry Hill, is it? Huh. Oh, that fella. Oh, no, that ain't Granville. No, I don't believe I've ever seen that fella before. Looks sort of like he'd come from the city, though. He's all dressed up there. Yeah, he might be a moving picture actor. Heard about our new theater and all. Moving picture actor? Boy, I hope I can give him my autograph. Well, now, don't say nothing to embarrass me, Cedric. Just let me do all the talking. Yes, Mom, I will. Most of it, anyway. Mind out, you do. Here he comes. Yeah, well, how do you do, sir? Come right in, sir. Hello. They told me I could find a Mr. Lum Edwards here. Well, they told you right, because I'm he, or him. Oh, well, fine. Here, have a cigar, Mr. Everett. Well, yeah, thank you. There's a generality. I don't generally smoke cigars, but... Uh... They go down on the expense account, the company said. Go ahead, take it. The company wants us to give them out. Well, if you insist, much obliged. I'm a new man with the company. You're what? Virgil Cleefsby's is my name. Oh, well, proud to meet you, Mr. Cleefsby. Have a cigar. Oh, much obliged. 
Uh, this over here is Grandpa, I mean, uh, Milford A. Spears. Hello. Uh, how do you do, sir? Proud to make your acquaintance. Have a cigar. Yeah, don't mind if I do. Much obliged. Don't hardly ever smoke the pigeon-toed things, but I'll try one. They're on the expense account. The company says that's okay. And this over here is Cedric Weehunt. Hello. Nice to meet you. Yes, well, are you sure enough a moving picture actor? Cedric Heshub. Don't pay no attention to him, Mr. Cleese. Have a cigar, Cedric? Oh, wait a minute. I'm afraid I haven't got one. Well, here, I got a couple. Take one of these, Mr. Cleese. Oh, thanks. Oh, don't mention it. Well, well, same brand as the company has us by. Well, natural. I'm just a new man with the company. Yeah, you told us that. I cover Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, and part of Oklahoma. Well, that's nice. Or is it Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, and part of Iowa? Well, I'm afraid I wouldn't know which it was. I'm just a new man with the company. Uh, would you like for me to give you my autograph? Cedric, I told you to hash up. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Creasy, this company you're with, uh, just what company is that? An old line company, Mr. Edwins. Solid as the rock of Gibraltar and up to the minute as, uh, uh, well, I've forgotten what it's up to the minute as, uh... It's in the manual, though. The manual? Yeah. I'm just a new man with the company. Yeah, I know you are. It's an old line company, though. You can rely on us to give you none but the best. Well, that's fine. But exactly what we do you mean? We service some you... of the best houses in the country. Especially in Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, and part of Oklahoma. Houses? What are you, a carpenter? No. I used to work in a used car lot, though. I was dissatisfied, though. Hmm. Somehow or other, when I used to stand there in that car lot, I just felt somehow or other that I didn't belong there. Uh-huh. That's how I felt. Yeah. Have you ever felt that way, Mr. Edgars? Well, I don't know. I reckon that That's I... That's how I felt. You feel those things inside of you. Just a little above the stomach. That's where I felt it. Inside of me. Yeah, well, I know what you mean, all right. I've felt that, too. Now, I always figured it was my appendicitis bothering me, though. I felt I was cut out for something different. The boss felt that way, too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why he let me out, I think. I wasn't really fired, you understand. It was more that he just let me out. Uh-huh. I see what you mean. And then came the offer from the movies. The movies? I grant it, then you are a moving picture actor. Well, put her there. Shake hands. I- I'm in the picture business, too. Here, have a cigar. <laughs> No, I'm sorry. This one I'm smoking is my last one. Well, here, you have this one. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, Now then, tell me about some of the pictures you've been in. Do you know Greta Garbo? Well, no. I'm not in pictures exactly. I distribute them. Distribute them? Yes. The manager of the Lyric Theater sent me down here. He said you were starting up a new picture house and maybe I could send you some of our films. Uh, Granny, you bet you can. Yes, sir. I'm proud you come along. We're going to need a lot of them films. Yeah, I'm proud he sent you down here. Just the fellow we're looking for. The fellow with the lyric theater said he was all booked up there. He couldn't use any of our films. You know, that's a funny thing. Everywhere I go, they always seem to be all booked up. Well, we ain't booked up here at all. Yeah, you come to the right place, Mr. Cleepsy. Yes, sir, sir. Now, tell me, what are some of the names of the films you've got for sale? That's a good question, Mr. Ebbets. The sales manual tells how to answer that, too. I wish I'd read it now. Well, uh, you know what you got, of course, don't you? Yes, sir. Hey, have you got that new one that's all the rage now that went with the wind business? Uh, I know Clark Gable's in that. Well, no, we don't have that one exactly. Uh, but we have, uh, well, we have different ones. Have you got The Birth of a Nation? No. Uh. We have different names and all that sort of stuff. Uh, like what for answer is? Well, I ran one for a theater manager in Missouri last week. I think the name of it was, uh, uh The Sagebrush Kid Strikes Again. Hot dog. That's, that sounds like a good one. Oh, it is. The best. Why, it's thrill-packed. It's what? Thrill-packed. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, you know who's in it? No. No, I'd love to know. Uh, what, what star is in it? I want to be sure and give my customers the best, you know. That's the way to do it, Mr. Emmett. Who's in it? Well, you know Gary Cooper? Oh, sure. I'm here to him. Sure. He's, he's in it, huh? No, but there's a fellow in there that looks exactly like Gary Cooper. Exactly like him. Except when he takes his mask off. 
Takes you... his mask off. That's right. You, you, you ain't got Superman in there, have you? Mm, not exactly, but this guy, he wears the mask almost all the way through the picture. So that wouldn't matter. Oh, I see. He does look like him with the mask on, though, huh? Why, you'd swear it was him. I thought it was at first. It's a wonderful picture. It's our bestseller right now. Why, it's tops in the entertainment field. Well, my grannies, I, I believe I'll take that and to start off with. How much is it? Uh, how much is it? Uh, how much money, you mean? Yeah, h- how much does it cost? Oh, yeah, the cost. Well, uh, let's see now, the cost. Uh, I'm afraid I can't tell you that. Can't tell me? No, sir. You see, that question has never come up before. I've never been able to sell one of these things before. You ain't? Not not never? No, sir. You see, Mr. Ellis, I'm just a new man with the company. I believe that's our ring. I know, Miss Lama. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lama and Abner. Hello. Let's see what's going on down at Pine Ridge. Well, Lum bought a motion picture film yesterday, but he had to pay a pretty high price for it because another client at the county seat was also bidding for it. That other client turned out to be Abner, who's at the county seat learning how to run a projection machine. As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum and Grandpappy Spears in the Jotham Downs Town Library. Hey, wait a minute, Lum. You mean that uh, Crispy's boss is coming to Pine Ridge to see you? Yeah, and believe me, I'm going to tell him off to you. Just wait and see. Well, what you coming here for? Well, yesterday after I found out I was bidding again Abner for that picture Mr. Crispies was trying to sell me, that Bosser's Revenge. Yeah, I recollect the name of it. Well, I had to bid up to $70 to get it. But when I found out it was Abner that was bidding again me, I told that Crispies fellow I wouldn't pay no $70 for it. And he said I had to. So then I said, well, leastways, let me see the picture before I buy it. So he run it off for me. How was it, Lum? Grandpap, there's the worst one picture I ever seen in my whole life. I tell you, I couldn't even follow the story of it. And the fellow they had playing the hero looked like old Cedric. For the law me sakes. It weren't him, was it? Of course not. So then I told him I wouldn't buy that picture if he'd give it to me for a gift. Free for nothing. That's the time, Lum. But he insisted that there weren't nothing he could do about it. He said he'd have to send his boss, Mr. Dwyer, here to settle it up. You mean Crispy's boss is coming here to Pine Ridge? Yeah. In fact, he ought to be here now. Said he'd be here at 2 o'clock, and I see it's a little after that now. Yeah, it is, ain't it? Believe me, I'm going to tell him a couple of things or two, too. I'll run him out of here faster than I'll run that Crispy feller out. Uh, Granny, they have to get up pretty early in the morning to get ahead of Lum Edwards, I'll say that. Tell you that right here now. Uh, about what time do you generally get up, Lum? Oh, I generally get up. Wait a minute. You're getting as bad as Abner, Grandpap, taking everything I say so literary. Oh, speaking of Abner, Lum, did you get a hearing from him again today? No, but I wrote him a letter. Told him to mind his own business from now on and just learn how to run that picture machine and leave everything else to me. Well, I don't reckon Abner means no harm. I'm more likely just trying to help with all. Yeah, I know, but seems like every time Abner tries to help... I can wait a minute. That must be that Dwyer feller coming now. See him coming up out there? Oh, sakes, i never seen a feller so fancy dressed in my life. Just look at that striped suit and that red necktie. <laughs> he dressed up all right, ain't he? But he won't look so pretty time I get done with him. That is just what I've been waiting for. You better stick around and see the fireworks, Grandpap. Fireworks? Find out. Here he comes. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Howdy, men, and good afternoon to you one and all. Dwyer's my name, G. Hempstead Dwyer. And uh, you're Mr. Edwards, I presume. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that's me. Mr. Edwards, I presume. I mean... Yes, sir, it's not hard to pick you out of a crowd, Mr. Edwards. I can spot a good businessman the minute I lay eyes on him. Good businessman, huh? Yes, Cindy, yes, Cindy. Doesn't take a second look to tell that. No, indeed. Well, I don't reckon it does come to think about it. <laughs> well, sir, I know what you want to get right down to business, Mr. Edwards, so I suggest... 
Oh, pardon me. I don't believe I've met this distinguished gentleman over here. Uh, Dwyer is my name. Uh, Spears is my name. Milford Avery Spears. Telegraph man and musician. Oh, a musician, eh? Fine, fine. I've got a dance band, have you? How's that? Uh, orchestra leader, are you? No, no. I play the player for Anna at the picture show. Oh, wonderful instrument. Fine, excellent, excellent. My favorite. Yes, it is. My favorite. Music is a wonderful thing. Charms the salvage beast. Uh, I congratulate you, Mr. Spears. And now then, Mr. Edwards... <coughs> I understand that our Mr. Christie's contacted you in uh, regard to our big current hit, The Vulture's Revenge. Yeah, and there's a couple of things I want to tell you about. You don't need to, Mr. Edwards. You don't need to. We're hearing it from all over the country. Everybody's raving about it. Sensational, that's what it is. Absolutely sensational. Well, your Mr. Christie's run it off for me, and there's the worst one till I'm I ever set eyes on. Well, you take a good picture like that, and that's the way it goes. You can't please everybody, but you've got to expect that. Uh, do you remember what they said about the big parade? Do you remember what they said about Ben Hur? Ben who? Her. Her? No, I mean him, Ben. Well, he is a him, Ben Hur. Ah. Uh, and don't forget this, my friend. Do you remember what they said about Cimarron, Cavalcade, Broadway Melody? Does he? No, I don't believe I do. What'd they say? Ah, there you are. You don't even remember, so you can see for yourself that it doesn't matter at all. Am I right? Well, yeah, I reckon so, when you look at it that way. All right. No, Mr. Edwards, you're in no trouble there. No trouble at all. Now, here's what we'll do for you, my friend. And believe me, I wouldn't do this for my own brother. Well, why wouldn't you? Don't you like your brother? Now, what I'll do is cut that price down. Don't I like my own brother? I... Oh! <laughs> Get it? You're pulling a fasty on me, Edward. <laughs> Good joke. Good joke. <laughs> well, I do get off some good earns now and then, if I do say so myself. But what I asked you just now was, why, why oh, don't sure, you... Oh, sure, sure, sure. Now, here's what I'll do. Now, um, the price of 70 bucks is a little bit high, so I'm willing to cut that down a little, oh, down to, say, um, 50... I tell you, I don't want it. Hey, down to the original price of 20 bucks. I'm losing money. But I'd rather lose money than a friend. Yes, indeed. Well, that's awful thoughty of you to say that, but I've done cancel that order. I don't want to buy that picture at no price. I tell you, I just don't like it. <laughs> well, naturally you don't. Naturally. You're prejudiced. I'm what? Prejudiced. I am. You saw the picture, so naturally you're prejudiced. Now, let's take a disinterested party and get his viewpoint. Uh, Mr. Spears, did you see the Vulture's Revenge? No, I never. I went over home. Charity had some chores for me to do. Yeah, and I... yeah that's fine. That's fine. Now, yeah. tell me this. Do you hate the Vulture's Revenge? Well, no, of course not. I ain't even there, saw you it. See, he says no. There, you got an entirely fresh viewpoint, and he says no. K N O W, no. And he represents the public, Mr. Edwards. He represents the public, and that's who you're going to be catering to the public. Well, yeah, I know that. Now, you see, trouble. Mr. Edwards, people like you and I aren't good judges of pictures, and here's the reason. We're too close to them. Too close, huh? Well, couldn't we move back a little? Uh, no, 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 no. I, I mean, we know too much about the industry. We know the stars too well. Oh, yeah, sure. Know the stars too well. Of course yes. we do. We know how pictures are made in the studios, on the set. Why, sure. But, uh, our trouble is that we're hypercritical. Oh, yeah. Awful hyper. So naturally, you and I don't like the Vulture's Revenge. But let me tell you something, my friend. And believe me, I wouldn't tell this to my own brother. Say, exactly what is it you got again, your brother, Mr. Dwyer? <laughs> You're a riot, Edward. <laughs> I got to remember that one. <laughs> Did I get off another good one? <laughs> You're a riot. <laughs> well, good for me. <laughs> Never know what I was so easy. Yeah, but here's what I was going to take. People don't come to the theater to see the picture. They don't. Huh? Of course not. They come for bingo, screeno, kino, giant, kino, middle-sized kino. They come for dishes, for turkeys, for baskets of groceries. Groceries? Oh, no, they come here to the store for them. Oh, no, not anymore. They go to the movie theaters for that. Well, I do know. That must be something new. So, you see, you can't lose with the vultures revenge. Now, I tell you, we carry a complete line of all that other stuff so we can fix you right up. And I'll let you have that picture for um, 20 bucks. Well, that sounds good, but there's just one thing about it. That fellow that plays the hero in it, oh, I just don't... yes. <laughs> Llewellyn Feldman. What an actor, what an actor. I was just thinking, if it had somebody like, say, Robert Taylor. Robert Taylor? Yeah. Oh, we could have put Taylor in the Vulture's Revenge if we wanted to. But everybody's seen him already. You don't want your customers wasting their money going to see somebody they've already seen, now do you? Well, no. Of course not. You want to give them something new. They want to see new faces, different faces. And, brother, you'll have to agree. 
that Llewellyn Feldnap has a different face. Yeah, he has. Different from anything I've ever saw before. <laughs> well, I never looked at it just that way. Yes. Well, I guess it's a deal then, is it, Edward? Well, I reckon so. You sure now you can afford to let it go for twenty dollars? I mean, twenty bucks. <laughs> well, uh, you understand, of course, that you've got to take a loss occasionally. Uh, you have to build goodwill, you know. Oh, yeah, sure. you got to build that. you got to do it. <laughs> now, if you'll just sign this right here, Edwards, we'll be all fixed up. Oh, here, you can take my fountain. Well, much obliged. Oh, you mean just to use. All right. Just sign right here on this line here, huh? Yeah, that's right, right on the bottom line. Now, you understand, of course, that that uh, includes a few extras here and there. A few extras, huh? Well, yes, you know, the usual ones. <laughs> Come oh, on sure. every contract. <laughs> sure, sure. You'll want the companion feature, of course. Companion feature? Well, yes, it's called The Beatles Return, episode 19. Or maybe it was 18. I, and I forget which just now. 18, I mean, it's the honey of the picture. It's another Llewellyn Feldnap triumph. Absolutely sensational. And then, of course, there's a full set of dishes. Uh, by the way, you like Mickey Mouse, don't you? Oh, yeah, sure. Now, them things is good. <laughs> well, there's a sort of uh, uh, Mickey Mouse design on the dishes. Oh. And then you get a baby Beano outfit. A highly interesting educational short feature showing how to make straw hats. And then, of course, you get the three genuine stuffed vultures. Now, sounded like you said stuffed vultures. That's exactly what I did say, my friend. Three stuffed vultures. You'll want them for lobby displays for the vultures' revenge. With a display like that, you pack in the crowd every night. Well, wait now. How much is all this going to cost me? <laughs> cost you absolutely nothing, my friend. Absolutely nothing. Comes with a picture. Oh, well, that's fine. Hey, Granny, that's a good deal. Yeah, of course, there's a little tax, amusement tax, you know. Oh, charges, sure. One thing and another. <laughs> it's all listed right there. Here's your carbon copy of the contract, Edward. And I'll see you gentlemen in the near and happy future. Well, good day to you all, gentlemen. Good day to you all. Yeah, good day, Mr. Dwyer. I got any best fellas, all right. Me and him are both kind of hypocriticals, of course. For the land sakes, did you look at this bill he left here? Them taxes and stuff mounts up to over $100. Over $100? Yes, sir. All right, Jimmy Lum, if that's what you call telling him off, you sure done a good job of it. Huh?